Good evening and welcome to the Boise State Esports Arena. Bronco Valorant is back as we're ready to start up the fall 2022 season and see what kind of new talent the Broncos have for this upcoming academic year. We start out with the Gridiron Rivals match, uh, an event that we haven't had in a while, but Gridiron Rivals is basically whoever the Boise State football team is playing tomorrow, which in this case is Oregon State. We have our esports team go up against them as sort of a precursor to all of the competition. I'm your host, Jacob Jem Palmer, joined by Brandon Red Hot Cozy Antic here. And this is going to be exciting. Not only is it the first Valorant match of the season, but it's the first Valorant match that we get to see all of the new talent that has joined the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, last year, last time we saw them on at least Broncos stream, they, they went pretty well. They qualified for a LAN, and they, they were definitely feeling pretty good. So this year is definitely going to be fun with a new roster about, you know, I think, Four new players they have this year, so or three or three or four new players this year, and so I'm really excited to see kind of how a new team happens. Uh, it's always fun to see when new teams form because you're going to see a lot of chaos that you usually wouldn't see with teams who've been playing for a while. So I'm really excited to always see how these teams mesh with each other and how they deal with problems that arise that they haven't dealt with before. Yeah, it's it, especially in a game like Valorant that's so dependent on communication and just making sure that everyone is putting in as much info as they can on where the enemy team is. You can't really afford for dead air on the comms. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's so micro-intensive, too. Like, there's so many moments where you have to focus, you know, laser focus with we, people who are going in. And so, you know, you don't get much time in this game to react. So I think it's very important to be able to have good comms and be able to stay focused at the same time while you're doing all these things. Well, we can show an overview of how this event is going to go like I said it's a show match as we play this week's football opponent that will be Oregon State so it's the Broncos versus the Beavers tonight in Valorant in a 5v5 best of three first to 13 and in case you're wondering what is on the docket for that best of three we're going to be starting out on Breeze then moving on to Haven and if we need to tie break it we will go to Icebox so pretty classic maps with kind of the exception to Icebox uh, and Breeze actually there's only one there's actually only one and I have just been informed actually uh, through production that it's actually the polar opposite of uh, Icebox that will be the third map. It's actually buying. buying. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's it's like Icebox, except it completely isn't. So yeah. we'll just have to remember and I think that. Going on the first map that we're going to be on is Breeze. Uh, we've seen a decent amount of it, but it's been so long since people have players have played against it. So a lot of the time, Breeze wasn't played that much. Mm -hmm. But with now the difference of like Split not being able, be able to be played, and we have uh, Pearl now. So I think the biggest thing is you're going to see these a lot more because you see those banned, right? Yep. So I think uh, Breeze is a pretty fun map. You, there's so many different ways to play it. I think Agent, uh, I guess... You have so many different agents you can play in this map with comfortability. We've seen a lot more jet, we've seen neons, we've seen everything. So I, I definitely love seeing the agent picks on this map and the diversity that it brings. Yeah, it really has a lot of different options. Of course, Breeze was always kind of an opera's paradise, but then Chamber came into the mix, one of the most popular agent choices. And when you put him on a map like this, he can be a force to be reckoned with. I bet we'll see a few of those picks. The agent picks are definitely going to be on the Broncos' mind, but what should also be on their mind are Doc's keys to the game in Valorant. 
brought to us by Drop In Gaming. Before we get into the match, Jock's keys to the game are going to be focus angles and flank, know your win condition, count cards and call abilities, and click heads. Brought to you by Drop In Gaming, the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. You can play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and events. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop In Gaming has the right games and competition for you. To begin your competitive gaming journey, sign up at dropingaming.com. And we have been talking so much about all of the new players and the lineups that we will be seeing the lineup just about right now as we dive into the game. And no surprise, it does look like we do see one chamber pick from Skies. We also see the standard Viper pick as well that we usually see on Breeze. Yeah, so this is pretty standard. Uh, you'll always see two initiators on Breeze just because you need the Sova and or Fade. We've seen those basically interchangeable with how they're comfortable they feel. You need a lot, since Breeze is so open, you definitely need to have that like openness, like be able to control certain maps, right? Like if you put a uh, Sova ult through a Viper wall, it's going to be a lot easier to play on that site. And of course the KO just needs those flashes and the silences. So it's a pretty common team. I definitely think that the biggest change that we're going to see here is the Cypher versus Chamber. Uh, usually Cypher players who are actually really comfortable with this map really enjoy playing this map and playing these kind of cheeky angles. And there's a lot of cameras that can be pretty crazy on this lineup with being able to see a lot of mid open in just different spots. Well, the opening lineup is brought to you by Count Identity Trust Global Network delivers real-time fraud prevention and account protection and enables personalized customer experiences for the 9,000 leading brands. So we're ready to load in here. Everyone's going to get their initial purchases all set up. Probably going to be a lot of ghosts and sheriffs to be brought out to this round. Just the fact that so there's such long-range angles here. People are just kind of maybe just going to want to start off clicking heads. Yeah, and we're going to see two changes to the Boise State lineup that were uh, from the team last year. Skies was basically the main duelist player last year, but now he's going to be kind of on this chamber dude that we've kind of seen him be playing lately. And the other person is going to be j -Bag. He was actually their main controller, but now he's going to be their kind of their flex player. So you're just seeing him playing all different kind of things. And so those are the two new players. The other three are actually brand new to Boise State. This is their first semester here, and of course, their uh, IGL is actually going to be Daimyo now, so expect a lot more different, I guess, play style here from Boise State as there's a different voice leading them. Boise State's going to open things up by heading down mid. Good for them. Orchid State hasn't really set up anybody on Heaven into mid. All they have is the Sova here who's going to peek out and then immediately retreat, just clearing it wide open for Boise State to just charge on to B. Yeah, and it looks like the uh, Oregon Stages could play for a full retake on this B site here. They just gave it to him for free, so it looks like they should be playing for a retake angle here. And Damio actually got a pick on the other side of that mid area, doing a great job of kind of stopping that lane of uh, attack. This guy's holding down the point, waiting for Waltz to peek out, trying to take him out of the headhunter. One shot, one, one kill. Remaining. Boise State now four to, five to one, excuse me. They're only going to lose one in what is quite a nice opening round for them. Yeah, and Daniel gets three there. Does a great job of kind of holding that down because when you get a free site, you're definitely kind of skeptical of what's happening over what the Oregon State is trying to do. In a lot of cases on Breeze, you're trying to get a retake from three different angles. So I think it was a great job by Demi to kind of play that mid lurk and ends up getting three because of it and just makes it so hard for Oregon State to actually get a clean retake in. Now Boise State is going to have the choice of next purchases, and these are going to come in play for the next few rounds too, not only because they can get an immediate gun advantage onto Oregon State, but they might try to bonus here, but I only see one one Spectre being brought out. A few Spectres, actually. Yeah, so you usually Spectres, and you'll see uh, Chambers just usually upgrading all of their Headhunter shots, and then you usually see the Jet on the uh, Marshal. And they're actually going to play a lot of two here. I like this play from Boise State, whereas Oregon State's actually just playing for a full save uh, as numbers. You're seeing four of them actually flanking on the screen here. But they're going to get into sight, and we have a Cypher, Dragonfly, or Dragon flies going for Lurk, but j was ready for that, and now they're going to have on sight. Hey, you really see Oregon State, you know, trying to predict or, or, or mainly play for the retake in both of these rounds, but. They really haven't predicted where or where Boise State is pushing up, and then by the time they do try to retake, they're already one person down, thanks to a one-on-one -on -one against the chamber. A few shots across the Viper wall, gonna eliminate Waltz. 
but it gets traded back onto Skies. Rio making work out of that classic. Answered back by JBank. Now it is two to one, one to one, a battle of the Sovas on point. As Boise State has planted, but just 13 left for Rio. Dimeout just doesn't have to play too carelessly here. Let the health work out for him. They're gonna try to bait out the defuse, gets him around the pyramid, and that's gonna make it 2-0 for the Broncos. Yeah, but that was just a great job from Boise State, making sure to kind of, I like this two play two. It's not really conventional. They know that they have the guns there and they don't want to get really cheese in that A main area from like shorties and things like that. So by the time they open up the, the door and they actually can have the whole site to look through, it's a great job of kind of creating that space. Uh, the big thing I think is uh, Jet actually ends up saving for the op most likely. Uh, usually if you have, you know, that just the share if you're looking for that off the next round. So did a great job there. Uh, the forum did go down. So in terms of Oregon State's uh, buy next round, they're going to be at a pretty big advantage because usually Boise State is going to look for like, you know, just the bonus here. So uh, we'll see, I guess, their first buy round here from Oregon State. You see all the Vandals, Vandals and Phantoms. And now the Cypher is actually playing on this side. Oh, wow. Alton gets just barely past the trap there. Yeah, Boise State seemed like they knew pretty well where that was placed down, just charging on to be yet again. They've been planning fast and furiously. Now the retake is all on to Oregon State. Die Mouse sets up on Sova. Waltz in the same position. It didn't quite work out for him that time, but things are working out for Oregon State, opening it up with three. That's gonna bring Boise State down to two. A dash right in on point to Neon is gonna flank out him. And this jet is furious yeah. right now, out for blood. Wow, great shot there, but Neon definitely went pretty crazy on this re-entry from their flank there. Uh, really using that jet dash to their advantage. You see him held it for a pretty long time because he could keep re-peaking this really aggressive angle until he was actually punished on it. But overall, Boise, like I said, had a great round right there. Getting four means that the, you know, Oregon State is not going to have the best eco going into this round here. So definitely going to see, like, a big advantage for Boise State. The biggest thing that Oregon State can do is, uh, yeah, uh, Neon's actually going to drop his Vandals and he can use the knives there to try to get something going here. But Boise State overall going to have the gun advantage for sure here. And now you see kind of the standard gameplay and you can judge more about where the match is going to go over these next few rounds rather than the first two rounds because... In all honesty, it's kind of you're playing a completely different game with the pistols. Yeah. Boise State going up mid yet again. Looks like they're actually going to pit, try to pinch in Oregon State. Going to use their first ultimate. The Hunter's Fury is brought out to try to zone off Boise State, but they just get out of the way. J-Bag picking up a double. Knife is going to be thrown onto Heaven. It's going to pick out that Sova. He's just going to go right onto that KO. Boise State still has the advantage, barely 3-2. Uncharacteristically, they haven't planted yet thus far, so this is the latest plant and the most delay we've seen Oregon State bring down onto the Broncos. And I do want to highlight the Sova ult there from Oregon State was actually a really heads-up play. They know they're down, like, guns advantage, so I think just going for a pick with that Hunter's Fury to get something going was actually a great job instead of just holding it for, like, a specific scenario here. Like I said, it's a 3v2, but Boise State does have one extremely low, so it's going to be a pretty good retake. They both have guns now, so it's pretty even in terms of their firepower. But they're starting to run out of time here. Oregon State's slowly walking in sight, but Boise State Why has the Hunter's mean? Fury for the end. Wow, they don't even need it. Aldum has 34 HP and ends up getting two. But I really like how Boise State played there. They don't want to use the Hunter's Fury when it's just, you know, a situation where they have to stop playing at once. Now Boise State is going to have four ultimates available for the next play. And yeah, that Hunter's Fury is really just kind of the backup of the backup for yeah. the Broncos' plan. They're going to go with full purchases here. Full Vandals, a full Shields, whereas Oregon State is going to have to sh settle for Sheriffs. We can see a lot of interesting pop-off plays on the Sheriff, so don't count them out. And this is exactly what you were talking yep. about, Red Hawks, oh, those yeah. cheeky Cypher angles. Usually Cyphers, and you see them play in, in the, today's day and age in terms of Valorant, you're definitely going to see a Cypher who's played with a lot of experience. So they're going to have all these different lineups and change it all the time. And great KO old well, now the Cypher traps are basically essentially useless, which also hurts Cypher in that meta pick, of course and just gets him right down. Does get 40 HP down, they don't have any heals, so once again, Alvin is going down to that one HP. Viper's pick being used. I'm really a big fan of Boise State using these ults when they get him on that cooldown to make sure they can you know, basically use him again in the half. Yeah, it's definitely the thing you see, especially with, player, with some teams that just played a little bit too cautious. They just end up with one ultimate for the whole half that they don't even use. Boise State up. Four to two in this fight, leaving it just up to the Viper and Jet. Waltz trying to move through Cave. 
is going to meet with a very tough angle and not enough time nearly to clear this, I think. Dimeout just taking it on to Neon. Last minute ditch attempt to charge on to point. Dimeout gets his triple and Boise State gets to a three round lead. Yeah, and I, and I think that's, like I said, Oregon State there, just kind of the two members just go in kind of willy-nilly there because you want to make sure that you actually end up dying on this round just to have enough for this next round eco. Uh, Boise's doing a great job of kind of swapping up their attacks, though. The one thing they are using a lot on this breeze that you can see is they're using a lot of this mid space. They're making so there's no cheeky flanks going on, and if anything, Boise State then becomes the flanker on, you know, on this post plant that they're having. And we're going to see them kind of, I guess gear up for another B take. They're kind of swapping up a lot. Skies is now going to be the one who's in the mid looking for a pick right away here. No tour de force just yet, but Boise State is actually going to be just kind of lurking this B side, playing very slow and then just going really explosive. And here it is. There's the flash. Does find a point before the Viper Wall even goes up and they're just going to fire right through the Viper Wall. Even though Morgan State got a few picks of their own, so it's still tied 3-3 at this point. Yeah, they go for two for two there, which is pretty uh, interesting just because Boise State started with that first pick and then just getting two big right. Wow, Ryu actually gets him down with that shock dart. Alden has been taking a lot of damage in these last couple rounds, but finally got punished for it. This guy's with the yep. flank on to Blarkson. But there's only one left. Waltz has kind of been a sleeper in this round, taking out Skies and flanking. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good job there. Uh, Oregon State just kind of had a really good retake. Got that, you know, that shock dart kill in terms of... Skies did a great job of getting that one flank kill, but after that, it just seemed like Oregon State was ready for that retake there. And, of course, just end up taking the round. But overall, Boise State has enough eco from the last round, two rounds to be able to buy again pretty comfortably, so not too worried at the end of the day. Not only that, they also have kind of the traditional, hey, if we need to... We need to save a few credits. We can also use Knives and Tour de Force. Boise State looks like they're going to bring that out as well. So it's the first time we're seeing... We're going to see how well Skies can click heads. And, you know, Skies kind of for the veteran player. We're actually seeing the new player taking the top fragging position thus far. Daimao already up to nine. You yeah, doing a great play, job. And he's the IGL play. too. So it's, you know, has a lot of going on in terms of comms in his head. Interesting uh, Viper's here for... Wall is actually just going to take it in two. They've... Definitely thought that, you know, Tube has been a big vital point for them, and so they're just going to lock that down to force Boise State into a main play. Yeah, Boise State abandons that entirely. I think they might be just thinking of a point change as well. You only really see Skies keeping an eye on A. They want to focus their heads out, but now they go up to where they've been so comfortable playing. That is going to be on mid. Sovadart is thrown out. Does, Does get a pin yeah. on to one. And Cypher is just kind of holding this A site by themselves, so if they can also just kind of realize that with information, uh, they can go to that site. I think Skies might have saw him cross there, but maybe just not in time. Waltz is going to be sitting here until obviously, uh, otherwise, BS of Skies is definitely just kind of taking all these angles. Dragonfly is by himself, though. Yeah. Blank works out for Boise State as they move on towards A to plant. They're going to get the plant down, and now as the Viper's Wall wears off, we actually see a cheeky angle being brought out here through the doors. It's going to take out Neon. How many left is on the dock? It is the question for Dimeout. Some firing through the wall isn't going to pick up anybody, but by Boise State, just a little bit more time. So they have a narrow advantage, 4-3. to three. Make that 4-2. to two. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of trades going back and forth here. Wow, and Boise State really like that. You saw Oregon State kind of open up with two uh, picks on the Boise there after losing one. But then Boise just brought it right back and just got them all through. It just shows that, you know, Boise State's definitely very aware of this post plant. And I will say, I think Oregon State definitely needs to at least swap up something with their Cypher just kind of holding these sites. Dragonfly is, it's really hard to kind of hold these really open spaces as Cypher just by yourself. And Boise is definitely taking advantage of that by playing so many different angles for these uh, pushes. And you see Oregon State again in their positioning, only really having one person watch over mid and they're Trying to think ahead of the Broncos and maybe think, oh, hey, they're going to charge A here. We're just going to charge them through Cave. But it always seems the Boise State is just kind of able to predict the reactions from the uh, Boy Oregon State. Just move on to point. Only having to face off against one, but Rio with a great opening onto Odd Aldum. He's going to give out his position. Boise State definitely knows where he is, evening it up to 4 4. He's going to get the plant. Rio brings out oh, the wow. Hunter's Rear onto the point, gets a dink onto one of them, actually is going to take out J Bag. And beautifully played there by Oregon State. Boise State now planning with one person down. 
Yeah, but Rihanna is definitely looking for this and it was riding for it. Gets one of Neon. Almost gets does snog it to you. They kept going back and forth at the peaks there, which was a pretty good job there. But it is now up to Dymo as a 1v3 situation. Does have his Hunter's Fury available, but it is kind of scary to use it this close. So he's definitely not gonna have the option to use that right now. Oh, oh only one. Might and actually be able to do this. It's both Zovas who actually both have triples, by the way. So a battle. See, who's oh. there? Oh, I thought he had him. Yeah, that was definitely pretty unfortunate because Damio actually, uh, he darts right there. He doesn't actually have to peek there. So he definitely was feeling confident, which I think is good. But in terms of the overall play, you definitely want to play a little slower right there in terms of that 1v1. But hey, if you have the confidence, great job there. But... Neo did come up on top. And I will say that Hunter's Fury uh, just kind of ripping out of nowhere, having no information of a tag or anything. I, like that, that was that's great. risky. Yeah. Especially, I mean, it's one thing if you can use it, like if, if it's a very tight and closed map, maybe you can guess, oh, hey, they're going to be in this room. I have a chance to, to do it on Breeze, yeah. where all the points are so wide open. It's so gutsy. But I, I do like how Rio's using these Hunter's Furies, because if, if you think about it, he's used his ult twice now, and Daimyo hasn't used his once. So, I mean, he's already almost at three ults at this point in this half, and Daimyo is still on his first, he hasn't even used his first time. So, I, I do like how he's just ripping these ults all the time. Odom starting things off with a double before Waltz answers him back. Still a two to one trade. Waltz again in mid. He's helping oh, wow, Oregon yeah. State stand up against the Broncos. Broncos now to 3 2 as they move on to B again. They're just going to rinse and repeat and hope things work out better this time. Yeah, they get uh, pinged by the Cypher ult there, but they do have the KO ult for retake, but it's going to be up to them to figure out, okay, is it worth it? Oh, wow, and Sky just gets an instant pick right there. Now it's a 1v3. He probably is not going to use that. He's going to try to do some damage, though, maybe get that ult down, but it is not looking ideal for him. And then he's probably going to peek right into Skies again. Oh, wow, he actually gets a shot into wow. Skies. Great shot from Larpson. He's just playing slow. He's playing slow and trying to take advantage of yep. Boise State right now. Gets Boise another State. one. That's pretty impressive. I mean, it seems like Boise's not, yeah, I'll say, maybe they they thought the op was not worth it. Oh, he's uh, not even going to be picking up the op. It could always be a it's thing where, you know, you buy the op and you get one with it, but at the end of the day, you're like, okay, I'm not actually feeling the op anymore, so let's just, let's just not pick it up. So, yeah, so, now... Just jog my memory correct, because I'm thinking back. Did Boise State, in fact, buy that op, or was it one they picked up? Uh, they bought the op. Sky's okay. bought that. That actually puts it. I mean, even though they win that round, only getting one pick with the op and then not being able to pick it up at the end of the round, mm. that's quite a big investment now lost to the Broncos. So Oregon State might have an opening here to really even things up going into wow. the house. Unless Sky's anything to say about it, he's just going to go ham right in the tube before Rio takes him out with the Marshall. So despite a great opening for the Broncos, yeah. they're going to go down to 4-4 as another Viper's Pit is used. Oh, that's pretty MP. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, too, because there's three and two right there for Oregon State, but they end up going down one. So pretty overall good for Boise State here. Rio coming back on the site has a shock dart. I don't think it actually ends up hitting anyone, but another Viper's Pit being used here. A lot of ults being used just in general for both teams, which is a great job to see those being utilized. Autumn sitting in the corner here. How's it kind of converse? j gets one. Oh, right Wow, in the yeah. Face. Larson does get him, though. And just like that, Boise's post-plant play is definitely really well executed, I would say. Uh, the Viper's Pit being used almost immediately after they plant. Just getting that Viper's Pit back online is huge. This play by Skies is huge because not only does he get pinged, but he peeks into three members of Oregon State and gets one, which is pretty insane to me because obviously that should be a play where it's just, you know, one for zero with nothing to lose. But... Overall, boys stay up 7-3. to three. Uh, Oregon State still has another buy, though. Their eco's been burning a pretty good job. I'd love to see the KO ult being utilized with that post-plant, but it seems like they don't have got a chance to use it yet. Damio has also not used his ult just yet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You were talking about how both teams are using the ults. The one exception has been Aldum and Damio, who have been holding on to this Knives and Tour de yeah. Force the whole half. So they're only really resigning themselves to using it once as Oregon State uses off the Viper's Pit just to close off B entirely. But it doesn't look like Boise State was even thinking about pushing there in the first place. Oh, wow. Rio gets a pick on the skies there, which is big. Rio gets another one. And Rio on the Sova has definitely just been doing a lot of damage. Oh, wow. Blarpson went all the way up too, but nothing was kind of set up for that. Dragonfly now even in it down to just one for Aldum. So one pick here is actually pretty darn good. You're the last person. This has one choice, and you know, I gotta say for Oldham, getting two picks when it's a five to one, nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the big thing there was is 
Like, Ryo is just doing such a good job on the Soviet. He's winning a lot of gunfights. And the thing is, is once once they, uh, Skies goes down early uh, on with that s chamber, Oregon State knows that they can flank through two. So that's exactly what they did. They had chamber go down, they went through two, and at that point, you know, when they looked to rotate out, Boise State couldn't be just because the team was right there. You're see, pretty decent buy. I think one has a Guardian, so they don't have a full buy. But they, they should do have Knives for Boise State, though, so it shouldn't be the worst thing in the world here. Well, we're heading into half, so there should be no excuse not to use them. That's the Knives, finally used by Aldum. Only one for the half. Wow. Rio is getting kills right off the bat there. Now, always is unfortunate for Skies because his trip is now not covering flank anymore. Knife is thrown out, not before he's hit, and it's just the drone into the Hunter's Fury. Again, just really gutsy plays here from Oregon State on Hunter's Fury. They walk right into the tripwire as well, and Dragonfly uses that to take out Adam. Dymo is trying desperately even things up with the help of Rilana. And now Boise State, in what looked like an, a match that didn't start off well for them, might still have a chance to get this, wow. but Blarpson's been a consistent spoiler. Yeah. Oh, now it's 1v1 here. Oh! And just oh. use it just right. Daimyo does a great job of shooting through that because a lot of people don't know that, that those logs are quite spammable. So great job Switching there. Sides. You know, the biggest thing, like I said, is I I'd love to at least see uh, Daimyo get a little bit more used to the Hunter's Fury. I know. He didn't use it at all that first half. When you compare it. <laughs> Three ults to zero. <laughs> I know. But other than that, Boise State's doing a great job. I think Damio is also just, you know, he's IGL into a lot of other things, but he also has the most kills on his team. So at the end yeah. of the day, he's the one who's, you know, getting a lot of those kills. So you can't really blame him for that. But like I said, I just love to see a little bit more heads up from that and just kind of use it a little bit more proactively. Even if you just kind of get information of, okay, they're not in this spot, it's not the end of the day. Well, if that's the advice for the Broncos, the question I have to ask you is, what can the Beavers do here in the second half to even this up? It seems like... Mechanically, Oregon State actually has really good aim and stuff. I think the biggest thing they kind of got away with was Boise State's attacks did not seem like Oregon State was ready for any of them, and they just kept thinking that the Cypher would be able to hold a full sight by himself, which didn't kind of work out there. So now I think what Oregon State's going to use with Boise State did back to them, but Boise State's playing a great job of these crossfire and gets three kills remaining. right away. Yeah, Boise State won the first two pistol rounds as well. So if they can bring it to double digits and force Oregon State to really not be able to afford hardly any eco rounds, this will be a great start for them. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing that I, I really enjoy from Boise State is how much they are doing on pistol round. They're so proactive. They're not just letting it, you know, the team come to them. You see them coming from flank. You see them working on mid. They're doing. A, you can tell these are actually planned out of like defenses, and I think that's a big difference when it comes down to just playing pistol round because pistol round is definitely so important, but. The thing I do want to highlight, Jem, that's really uh, odd is both Sovas and the main team both having 18 kills to be the top frags. That is something that you do not see very often because usually it's them setting up other players, right? Right, right. But it seems like they're just kind of making it happen, so we're going to see BSU obviously have the weapons here. Does Whoa. get one. Aldum with the Marshall takes out Larson. Again, when you don't have the shields, the Marshall yep. can actually be pretty darn effective. And the rate of fire from it, too, just being a one shot with no armor is doing so well. Oh, wow. Great shot from Skies there. Looks for two. Teammate trades now 3v1 here for Boise State. And they have a great flank, and they get it again. Yep, that's a great job from Boise. Uh, that, that's kind of typical from, you know, an Oregon State save round, though, or in general on Breeze. You're just going to kind of throw the Viper Ball out. They got Plant down, so Oregon State actually is, you know, they're fine with that. They're not they're not too unhappy about that. But now they're going to be having the buy rounds, and that's 4-10 in Boise State's favor, which is a pretty big, you know, gap, I would say. Especially when you consider that this was Oregon State's choice. Remember, yeah. Oregon State, in terms of the football game tomorrow, is playing at home. Yep. So we decided to let them have kind of the home choice right. as well in terms of stages. Yep. So... Boise State is going to be good. If they win this, they're going to be going into Haven on match point, the map that they wanted to play. Yep. And, and the funny thing is, is uh, looking at the, like, the actual, I would say, percentages, if you look at like uh, champions, which is happening right now, a lot of the teams who pick the maps are ending up actually losing. I, that, and so it is pretty fun to see that with like the champions that's, difference. That's so. also been the case in, in eSports Tower yeah, a lot yeah, exactly. lately, too. So. So. Waltz gets a pick right on J-Bag, and Skies with another op just gets Rio right away, which is their top frag, so getting Rio is definitely a big part in that, you know, one for one here going for them. Was he State keeping an eye over Cave? Oregon State has yet to push through. Alvin did lose his Skies. stash here. Yeah. Rotation over oh. here. How did he even get that? 
I didn't even see the headshot myself, but sometimes just seeing one pixel that's still there is enough for these players. Oregon State now just down to two. Barely gonna get the spike down. And as soon as oh. War goes down, look at that spray transfer from yeah. Odom. He was definitely ready for that one. That just shows some great discipline right there, just kind of mechanics of the one first one shows and he keeps shooting for the second one. He does not, you know, stop shooting for the second one. So definitely love to see that. And Boy State goes up 11-4, and that was Oregon State's buy round, I believe. Actually, no, the round before was, I'm pretty sure. So definitely does not feel the best here for that. And, you know, Boy State's eco is definitely thriving, whereas Oregon State's eco is not looking ideal. Yeah, their eco is not looking ideal here, but they are going to force. It seems like they don't want that 12 round. Um, they want, you know, maybe they start now. So you never know with those kind of rounds, but it looks like Oregon State has made the executive call to just go for the force. They're going to change things up by moving on to B, but Boise State is actually going to already be kind of doing a sneaky rotation down toward mid. With this, how much of Oregon State has kind of been pensive on pushing on to the point? I, can, I can't blame the Broncos for trying to, you know, just push ahead of maybe wow. a little aggressively. Not that they can't hold down the point itself. It's going to be a traded one for one. Spike planted. Now... Oh, I'm just going to see that trip. I'm just going to shoot it beforehand. And the Viper Shit's going down, which is honestly not... It's pretty advantageous to them because they're going to have short range guns like the Spectres and things of that nature. So it's actually the best scenario for them they can make. Dragonfly gets one kick onto Dime oh, wow. and yeah. Even, even if you have the Guardian, though, he's oh. doing pretty well with that short range. Yeah. It looks like Waltz with his Guardian. I think if you're Skies, yeah, you, you just, just go say. for safe here. Oh, yeah. And... Oregon State has a great force run. I think the re I think the biggest thing that the reason why they forced is because they knew they had the Viper Spit. So they're like, hey, if we can get on the site and get the Viper Spit down, we're actually at a pretty even state. I think they did a great, great job there, and they get guns in the process. Waltz making that Guardian look just ridiculous by hitting all these shots. So overall, gets a 3K at the end of the day. Great job there, and. Boy State should have enough money because they just, you know, they've accumulated so much credits over the rounds, but Oregon State is going to be basically caught up with them in that, so the force for Oregon State does pay off. They open up a little bit more breathing room for themselves, and <laughs> I loved Viper's uh, grenade there, just bounced off. <laughs> <laughs> it's playing a little it happens. Ha hacky sack yeah, with your it grenade. Yeah, it happens, it happens. At least you can just pick it right back up. Rio just sticks with the Guardian. They're not fully rotating off this... Uh, Viper's Pit just yet, it looks like they might try to contest it, which you do hear the drone going out. I do like that play, because it does end up tagging him. It's going to be pretty detrimental. But there's still three of them there, but look at the two play. They have two and two kind of slowly rotating there. Uh, no one's been found just yet. Alden's playing close to this, and Alden gets one, but the thing is that Viper's Pit goes down and retrades. They go down for basically a one for two there for Oregon State, being at a disadvantage against that Viper's Pit. And now they're going to start planning, whereas Oregon State's up a 4-2 advantage here. Daimyo is playing yellow, doing his best here. Does have full utility. Skies does get one. Does ping the other one, so they know at least where one other is. I mean, even though it's 3-2, that yeah. Sova is down so low. Oh, and great shot from Waltz. Great shot from Skies as well. Swaps the head on her. Skies! Are you kidding me? No. Might be looking at a quad to just... One miss on the operator. Isn't going to have enough time to reload, so he's going to move on to the point itself. Reload and just gets oh. a little bit bigger. Happy, but gets it with the headshot on the headhunter to defuse Skies. Close. Wow, he Looking went like crazy. He's be for MVP here. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Sorry. What a crazy round. 2v4 scenario for Boise State. And Skies just going crazy with that headhunter off combo. And that's the thing with the chamber is. You know, people usually can swap to the, the Sheriff or the Shorty pretty fast, but the Headhunter just swaps to it and just doesn't need anything else. Just gets two headshots with it. Huge round for him because now, you know, really <laughs> just puts a bullet into Oregon State's plans and at least make it so. At the very least, Boise State is at that overtime spot. I, this great job there from Sky is just really holding it down. The veteran BSU really helping out so far. And now both teams are just yeah. going to try to end this quickly by charging towards each other in caves. And it's a two-for-one trade for the Broncos. Can they close this out? But Waltz still has something to say about that. Neon also bringing out the knives to drive it down to 2-2. Two -two. And now the two Broncos that took the weird kind of the funky yeah. positions off in mid and B are going to be the ones to bring this home. 
Skies does have the off, but Waltz is a great angle. He's probably not ready for this. This is actually an advantage for Waltz here. Yeah, and he's gonna play close to stairs. I do like that play. 1v1 here, though. Both Vipers. Only problem is Rariana does have a Spectre, so it's at a disadvantage, but could get past the steps to the last kill here. Oh. Does flank and ends the game right the there. Boise win. State takes map one convincingly over Oregon State. Yeah, it's kind of fitting that a flank was what ended it because that was some of Boise State's best plays were being able to be sneaky, outplay the others on positioning, and get the first win and drive themselves to match point in this two out of three. Yeah, I, this best of three. Yeah, say best of three. <laughs> <laughs> They're hoping to get two. Yeah, out of, of course. And I think that was a great game to start with. I mean, Boise State used mid so well. I mean, in Breeze, we kind of it looked like it was very hard for Oregon State to adapt to them. I think they're always changing. We saw a lot of two plays, a lot of A mains, a lot of mids. We saw so many times where they at least have a one or two or even three mid that made it so hard for the retake that I think Oregon State wanted to play from not be able to do that. Well, now we're going to go into round two after this break. We'll see if kind of the curse that Red Hot's brought up of choosing the map doesn't get you the win, plays through, or if the Broncos can go through to an undefeated victory. You're not going to want to go away. We'll be back with the conclusion of this Gridiron Rivals right after these messages. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Protecting your customer journey from fraud is critical. According to industry analysts, Count's AI-driven platform is the leading solution. From account login to digital payments, Count is recognized for both its customer impact and technology excellence. Learn more at Count.com. Welcome back to the Boise State Esports Arena as we bring you the next part of our Gridiron Rivals match against Oregon State to see if the Broncos can't set a good omen for the football team tomorrow as they go up against the Beavers. And they're already up 1-0 to zero in this Valorant match, so we'll see if they can close it out. I'm your host, Jacob Jem Palmer, joined by Brandon Red Hot's Coast of the Antic. And I was just crunching the numbers over, uh, over uh, halftime here, and the one thing that stands out to me is Oldham was kind of a sleeper. The only duel 
winless for Boise State that last round. Had the overall KDA lead, 21-13-5. But Daimau, even though he was on an initiator, finished in second with 18-11-4. So he's playing initiator, but he's almost playing it like he's a duelist himself. Yeah, and the funny thing is a lot of his kills were on attack, right? Like, that's the crazy thing is because, I mean, usually you can get a lot of kills on defense or something like that. Maybe they keep going to your site or things just work out that way. But... Getting that many kills on attack as an initiator is definitely pretty crazy and overall just a great performance. For Especially him since he didn't use the Hunter's Fury yeah, hardly yeah. at all. It was just just pure, you know, raw raw kills that he got. Yeah, I definitely enjoy how both teams are definitely utilizing their ults mostly, right? Like we saw three ults from Neo in the first half, which is crazy to me because it's an eight-point ultimate. So he is getting ult orbs, getting kills. I mean, great, he did pretty well. So that's obviously a part of it too, but did a great job overall. Well, before we get into Haven, we'll give the Broncos a quick refresher on how they can close out the match in Doc's Keys to the Game in Valorant. And for Doc's Keys to the Game in Valorant, before we get to that, actually, we will just kind of show you Doc's Keys to the Game. So let's just get right to Doc's Keys to the Game in Valorant, brought to you by Dropping Gaming. It's to focus angles and flank, know your win condition, count cards and call abilities, and click heads. Brought to you by Drop in Gaming, the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition. Play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and events. For whether you're new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Drop in Gaming has the right games and competition for you. So as we're ready to head into the next map, Haven, you were talking kind of over the break, just kind of how you like Haven. And the key phrase that you used, uh, Red Hots, was it forces teams to be creative. Yes, because Haven's of a map where it's attack sided, right? There's three different sites. It's obviously, it's hard to defend three different sites when you're playing against a team who can use any of those three different sites. So I really enjoy how teams will play comps. Like, we've obviously seen, like, the Optic, where they've used Neon and stuff like that. But we've also seen a lot of different teams, like, more move more to the Rays or things like that. So it definitely guys forces you to feel more pressure on attack. Because other maps, if you're defense side, you're like, oh, we just got to play the defense, right? But on this map, when you're attack side, you have to be more creative in how you get those attack wins. Let's head into Haven and see if Boise State can't start things off right with some good attack wins. They both mostly won when they were on attack on Breeze yeah. here, too. So we'll see if that trend carries over to the second match. Broncos versus Beavers in the Gridiron Arrivals. It is about, we are about to throw down and see if Boise State can close this out undefeated. But Oregon State also is a team who won a good amount of rounds in Breeze, shown that they can't quite be counted out, as, as we see. Sky is still going to be on that chamber pick, as we saw. Bit of a change yep. up from Rariana onto the Omen instead for Haven. And I like to say I, it's always it's always fun uh, <laughs> when we get to see Neon be brought out. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about, though, is that you'll see like the Neon Breach be brought out, whereas the Oregon State's going to go for the Neon on the Rays, which is both, they're both very, like, I guess, uh, standard, Two right? Both agent. teams are will do that all the time there. So I like Boise State going with the double initiator here with uh, Damio on that sky, whereas, you know, Oregon State's looking for more of that fade. Um, I'm really excited for both these teams. Dragonfly, obviously, on that Cypher again. I think the biggest thing is Oregon State's, it's not like they were really losing that hard on mechanically. Their aim was still really good. We saw a lot of crazy shots come out from them as well. I think the biggest thing was that Breeze attack from Boise State just had Oregon State not really having an answer for it. And so I think this is going to be a lot different for Boise State attack-wise because Dragonfly is going to get more of an option to defend himself because he's going to have just kind of more areas that are small mm -hmm. You know, Haven's a pretty small site map, so going to see a lot of crazy lineups I could see from him. Well, something to ruin those lineups are the controllers. Yep. And speaking of controllers, a little bit of a flash from the past being brought out from Waltz here on the Astra. Used to kind of just be the de facto controller and just squeeze everyone else out, but now we don't see her quite as often. Yeah, we, she, we definitely have seen her, like, rising in popularity from a lot of teams. Uh, I think people are just kind of realizing that Astra's still not bad. I think it was just one of those things where she got nerfed right away and she's like, oh, she's terrible. But it's like you, they, a lot of these players put so many time like into, into Astra, and especially on a map like Haven where you can kind of use those small areas to Astra's advantage, I think it's a really good pick. I mean, especially since we've seen uh, the biggest thing is on Bind lately. We've seen Viper and Astra, that double controller. So definitely getting more popularity into it and uh, we're going to see it this game versus the Omen. Immediately, wow. gonna get stunned in the paint shells. Take out Aldum immediately. I always love seeing some good race yep. play, and it's starting out in spades for the Beavers. Great job getting that ult orb there. Just a good point of just, you know, getting something in there. Especially on the chamber, who kind of has that two to four, so having such an open map sometimes, those open areas. Oh, great shot. Doesn't get the second one, though. And Boy State's down 2 3 with one very low. J Bag is only at 48 HP. 
Tries to get a dink onto Waltz, but Waltz is able to escape with full health. Boise State rotates over to C Lawn, and they might just have an opening here. They have to be wary, though, of this sideline that Oregon State has on them. Are they going to block it up? They're going to peek through Garage, and Waltz just runs away again, allowing Boise State to plant. Yeah, Rihanna does get the plant down. At least get a plant for that eco. j -Bag does get a good cuss here. Just kind of shooting into the smoke. Does go down to Dragonfly, though. And Waltz coming out here at the right. Oh, does even, wow, does even right click. Just feels really good for that. And Oregon State wins that 2-0. It definitely kind of sucks when you open up the round. Uh, dying to a raise nade right away. It definitely is at a disadvantage, I would say. Yeah, just the Hail Mary from Oregon State immediately paid off for them or well, it looked like a Hail Mary to me, but it was probably a lot more calculated. And that, that just shows you agent comfort, though, right? Like, that just shows you that you have the lineups ready. You know exactly what's kind of happening. You read them a little bit. And so I, I love seeing things that just show that, hey, I've played so much of this agent, and I can let me show you what I can do on this thing. Boise State going to have to be in an uncomfortable position now, one they haven't found themselves in at all on Breeze. Going to have to save. They're going to go with all classics. I saw one of them hovering over the shorty yep. for a bit, but... Looks like it's going to be all classics as they try to even things up. Oregon State having the gun advantage. No raise nade to open up this round, and everything pretty <laughs> evenly split between all three points. Yeah, it's just going to be a standard save here from Boise State. Definitely looking like for a pick on Skies, that kind of the headhunter. Headhunter is definitely a kind of eco, you know, gun that you've seen a lot of crazy things happen to that thing. But other than that, of the classics, this kind of long range issue, they're going to see Dragonfly kind of jump peak, but. Dragonfly is peaked up already for this. Doesn't have a trip actually in main here, so what do you say might just walk straight through this? Work Does get one. Three, two, takes out Aldum. J-Bag is next to fall. Wow, Waltz gets another second one. Now with just two left. Boise State, can they even just get one exit frag? They're going to be denied even that. It's a flawless from the Beavers, putting them off to a very comfortable position. As we like to joke about it, maybe the map pick curse is real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the one thing that I, I do, hopefully, I guess it's just a save round, so it usually doesn't mean too much, but I, I do want to see Aldum and j -Bag really be working in sync right now with the Neon Breach, because that's going to be your biggest factor when attacking and creating space. So I definitely want to see the Cuss into a Neon Peak rather than like a Cuss, wait a couple seconds, then the Neon Peak, right? So you definitely want to be kind of syncing those things together, and it takes a lot of coordination for those two uh, picks to work together. Boise State is going to spread things out pretty evenly and not commit to any one point off the bat. Same for Oregon State as we have a pretty standard opening. Yep, Oregon State did get flashed in long, so they at least know that the sky was there. Uh, they made us get the flash. Oh, they do shoot it once, so it doesn't kind of end their suspicions. Playing 2A kind of standard for Oregon State. I like the dog does see at least one long here. And of course, they're actually going to start working up this mid area where the trip is, but they do not know at the moment here. Dragonfly actually is lit uh, from a little bit of damage earlier in the round, and Alden just needs to be careful about dashing through here because of this trip. Yeah, the trip, but they shoot it fast enough to where his team helps him out, and they start taking back sight. Dragonfly actually gets one like flank, though. Oh, yeah, he got to a really cheeky scenario right there where both sides were death. Now Boise State with only two left. Has the plant, but oh. it's being pushed in from all sides. Just one left, has to play the post plant. Prowler is going to get out Skies, and I don't think he has enough time to even get to the point before it's defused. Oregon State takes it three to zero. And and that's some great discipline right there from Oregon State. He knows that they just got haunted, and so he literally can't hear them hit the bomb at all. So just hitting the bomb and having their team just kind of defend them is a great job there. It does suck for Boise State, though, because that was Boise State's buy round. And Oregon State won against that buy round on their bonus. So now Oregon State's eco is in a very good spot, whereas Boise State is definitely going to be kind of looking for things. We see the tour de force pop from Skies here. So maybe looking for a couple eco uh, kills to get those guns back and kind of turn the tables a little bit. And we'll see Skies kind of play. going Let's long. Play. They do kill the tour de force now. Damio does have the sheriff as well. Does Again, get they yeah. run into the same tripwire. Yeah, it does get him on the same spot. Doesn't get punished for it, though. Does get a lot of damage, of course, but definitely still alive. Wow, the, the Cypher mechanics here are just going, showing it to us. Dragonfly gets to the side of it. Throws all of his uh, smokes as he goes back to site. Wow, great little cheeky uh, trip right there. And then the Seize as well. And Oregon State's utility usage is just really on top of it right now. I think that just goes back to what you were talking about. I think they just went with 
everything that's comfortable yeah. to them. And it's showing Sky still has an outside position, although he gets caught out in that eco. Util, excuse me, thrown out by the Beavers, tries to take out the Cypher as he jumps across the air. He's only going to have one shot left on this Tour de Force. Thing is, though, he realizes he does have a good amount of time. Oh, in that's, a great, that's a great camera, though. Yeah, that's a good camera right there from uh, Chamber, because obviously he has to shoot it with his last off shot or just die, and that's what he chose to do. Uh, Oregon State's util is definitely kind of a hard thing for Boise State to deal with at the moment. Um, the thing is, Neon can't really just willingly sprint through everything at the moment because she has to be worried about the tripwires. And so that definitely stops their attack with being able to go really fast. That's the whole thing that Boise State comp wants to do with that breach, breach Neon is just go at them quick. But the thing is, they can't do that because the trips are just really stopping in their place. And even when we saw the last round, that cheeky trip that he placed, like no one would ever expect that to be there. Skies is actually invested completely into an op, forcing himself to go on to small shields. So this is another all-in buy for the Broncos. If they don't win it here, they're going to be looking at a world of pain for the next few rounds. As we see the smoke is placed in toward B. <laughs> Alvin was ready for it this time, but it's <laughs> not there this time. So really kind of scary just walking back from mid like that because at any point anyone could peek, but does get through it alive. I can see BSU playing for the ult orb along here to get Damio onto those Seekers. Uh, not going to do that, actually, though. They should go straight into sight. Doesn't see anyone with the dog. Problem is, if they don't see anyone with the dog, they're going to find themselves in the same situation of walking into those trips as they move <laughs> on to A. They're going to smoke out heaven and move wow. on. Wow! They get the trips again! Wow! <laughs> He, they, they looked everywhere for it, but Dragonfly knew that he's going to kind of do it. Rolling Thunder coming in from both teams, actually. Both teams are kind of in that stalemate. Rio gets one, though. Skies gets another. Boy State trade two for zero. Wow, he jumps from he jumps out and actually lives from that. Skies is an op. Swaps. Oh, but does not have the hero play he had last time. And no. What a chaotic round. It's so funny because looking at the player cams of Boise State, their point of view, you can see how the Cypher trips are affecting them. Every corner of the smoke, every little inch they check, but the moment they don't check, they push through, the trip happens, Cypher's playing, he's just chilling there, he doesn't care about the smoke, it's actually good for him, shoots through, gets the kill, and at that point, just every utility happens and Oregon State just kind of goes up on top with that retake here. And I do really enjoy, I like the timeout here from Boise State. Uh, they definitely do not kind of have a means of dealing with this Cypher at the moment. It seems like it's in their head a little bit too yeah. much. And um, it is kind of hard because I think the biggest, the only way they can really kind of deal with this is the Sky Dog. But the thing is, is what they're doing is they're putting the trip a little higher. So it's harder for the Sky Dog to get through that. And they have to use the Sky Dog for the A short. So they kind of have to figure out what they need to do here in order to stop this Cypher from just taking over. It's kind of a win-win for the Beavers in the fact that their comfort picks just so happen to be the right counter to the type of comp Boise State was running. Because, yeah. like you said, they wanted to go fast, but now they can't take one step without second-guessing themselves because the Cypher's yeah. all over the place. And it's funny because, like I said, it's, it's our pick, but it seems like you know their picks are, are more comfortable on it. So it definitely is going to be harder for them to adapt. And I think... It, like I said, Boise has a timeout here. It's a great job. I think they need to figure out what their at least plan is for this Cypher and how they can adapt with their team comp. Because obviously, like I said, their team comp wants to go in. Um, and Cypher changes up every round because this guy has lineups everywhere. We've seen him. And so definitely got to figure out a way for that. We do have the Showstopper way, uh, available for Oregon State as well. And Boise State is going into a save here. So definitely just going to be kind of looking for some picks here and there. C's coming out, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess. Uh, Oh wow! <laughs> that was right through the smoke as well. Yeah, he used the he used the boombot as his like reference, and so he just shot right where the boombot activated and got the kill. Everything's working out for the Beavers. Boise State did manage to salvage some of that push by at least making it a one to one trade. But now Dragonfly is setting up in heaven yet again, quickly followed by Rio. Boise State makes wow. the early plan. Dragonfly taken out. Oh. Rina. He's answered back by Skies to drive it down to 3-3. Can Skies win another 1-1? One one? Almost, Spike and he was looking eight. away too. But Oregon State is just unstoppable right now. Demi does have a flank though, and he was ready for the crouch from Blarpson. You never know when that crouch is going to come in handy, and it just kind of always throws off the players. I mean, 
if he doesn't crouch there, he just gets domed right there. So you never know when it's going to work out here. And Oregon State is, is just showing that their retakes are just really – it's hard to play against. I mean – Boy State's not doing a bad job of getting onto site, but the thing is, it's getting onto site with what cost, right? They're always kind of losing one immediately, and then Oregon State just kind of comes in, you know, as a team and plays their utility. They still have Fatal. I don't think we've seen that all game. So they just have been saving it for it. They have the Showstopper as well, and of course, Cypherold obviously has that kind of. You need to have it happen. You have to kill it happen first, so. Boise State is there now going to try to use the go fast strategy. Uh oh, just look at this trip, though. Right onto A, but again! Oh, save! Time! Oh, and he has an Odin this time! And, and I think he just shot through the wall in Haven. I don't think he, like in Heaven, I don't even think he actually peeked it. I think he just held it. And it must be just so tilting and just really I, that, hard to deal with. And that's exactly what I was, I, I was concerned with because Boise State, when I don't agree that, I, no, I do agree that it was the right position for them to use their timeout. But we'll talk about that just a little bit later, because right now, Boise State is having to defend. They managed to get the plant down, but Neon and Larson already oh, wow. getting a double. j -Bank might be able to salvage this Ooh. with the triple. It's down to one, one, and he has an oh-so-slight health advantage. It's just oh. one straight bullet, but the paint shells again are going to be Boise State's undoing, whether it's the beginning of the round or the end of the round. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And I, we did see Neon actually use their ult right away on C Long. So the moment that he got through spawn, he knew exactly where Boise State was going. And it's just so hard for Boise State with this Neon to just deal with these trips because, you know, Alden wants to go fast. Like, he wants to be Sonic, but he literally just is getting slowed down. And, it, and the thing is, is <laughs> Dragonfly is such a perfect Cypher player because he has these two trips so cheeky played, mm -hmm. and then he uses his camera also in a cheeky spot, and he has an Odin, he's just spraying mm -hmm. through the boxes. Yep. If it's hard yeah, to deal with. Yeah, if Odin with. wants to be Sonic, then, yeah, you know, Oregon Let's State's play. being the perfect dake man and setting <laughs> up the traps in all the right places. Yeah, and we see that the Tour de Force is being procs from Skies right here. Gotta be careful with the smoke here, because Oregon, St yeah, see, Oregon State's just doing a great job of spraying through it, and Altum has died the smoke for the fourth time, I think in a row. Not just four times, but consecutively. Everything is going terribly, terribly wrong for the Broncos. One HP on Daimyo, too, by the way. So uh, Chamber got a lot of damage. Oh, sorry, Cypher had a lot of damage that round. Boise State is going to throw out a bit of util through mid as they try to readjust their strategy. The problem for them is, is also... I'm not quite sure if they're they're hanging out in the cubby there on C just because they want to keep that open or if he's just too afraid to peek out through yeah, C long yeah, again. Yeah, no kidding. It is definitely scary. And it seems like these, the smoke play from Morgan State, like they have so many kills where they just don't see him. And so it just, it's just hard when you're just dying through smoke. It's just utility. And Oregon State is just prepping so well in how they're using their utility here. I mean, they don't have to really use their gunplay too precise at this point just because they do such a good job of utility. Oh, and Waltz. As I say that, Waltz gets one immediately on the off for Skies, but immediately hit back with a concuss from Breach. Does have the ult available for... Oh, and he's trying to get it out of him, and Pio jump peeks him with an off. Eight and a zero, and I was alluding to this a little bit earlier, but this is the time to bring it up in full. I, I was really worried how things were going to go after that timeout. I think it was the right time when Boise State used that timeout, but... Often mentally, it's like pulling the emergency brake. You know, you're yeah. using it to gain your senses and try to turn things around. Maybe you pick up a round or two after that. But for things after the one time you, the one chance you have for the coach to talk to you and reset your minds, things just continue going wrong. I'm very worried for Boise State. I can't look into their minds, but I'd be worried for their mentals right now. Yeah, I mean, especially Alum, right? I mean, Alum is definitely effectively being just shut down by this pick. I mean, it's just so hard to play around because he swaps stuff every round, too, so it's like you can't really, you know, tell where he's going to go. Time out to throw out the Hawk. Gets a blind into Garage. Skies, Skies gets a pick, though. That is a quite the difference for Boise State to get the first pick because that's what's been so successful for Oregon State. Alum's going to toss. Oh. Toss the spike back and yeah. use his <laughs> ultimate. <laughs> He's looking all the places He's now. Yeah. All over the places. He can't. He can't be the neon he wants to be. Yeah, and, but he did get one, so it does definitely help to at least not die through a smoke this round. So that was that was good. He did get at least some value out of his ultimate there. It is a 2v4 from Boise State, though. Definitely don't have the guns that Boise State does. Neon gets one great trade from Damio there. Still 3v2. 
And just like that, get a thrifty. That's just what Boise State needed. They needed something to kind of get them out of this rut. Being down 8 0 does definitely not feel the best, but if you can go 8 4, it's, not the, it's yeah. definitely not the worst. But overall, just a great round. We needed that. Boise State definitely needed that to happen. Uh, I think Oregon State, once again, still playing quite well with just these picks. I mean, you could just see right there with <laughs> with Autumn clearing the site on how he's so, like, he is so aware of these trips. And it's, it's funny because he keeps looking at these places, but it seems like Dragonfly knows he's going to do that. Like, it's like he sees into the mind and he's like Batman. Like, he, he just is playing all these crazy little, like, tactical setups. <laughs> Me and he talk about all of them getting shut down. One place where he tries to look over B, he's just going to move through the smoke, though, and get the pick he was looking for. Yeah, and we're seeing Mariana slowly playing on the A site here. Does have Cypher set up on there, but Cypher is just going to play on there, checks his trip, goes back to right where he wants to, which is that heaven, heaven area, right where he feels safe. Seekers are going to be popped, though, so they can probably see that he's going to be in tower. Okay, here's the problem, though, is Aldum is immediately checking for the trip while I was able There's to take the dog, one though. out. There it is. It's right on oh the ground. My gosh, oh, yeah. my gosh. He just can't. He gets away with it every round. Right. Here comes Rolling Thunder as well for the Oregon State retake. But BSU, I think all four members or three members were hit by that. And so Oregon State has gotten full take of it. Oh, wow. Great shot from Alden there. Good cuss. Does get one. I mean... If he knows the tripwires are no longer no there. there, then he can finally play. Yeah, and a great job for Boise State to actually end up winning that round. I mean, Oregon State had a great retake there with the full rolling thunder. I hit to hit all three or four members there, but ends up doing a pretty good job. And it's just so funny because <laughs> every round, Dragonfly just gets one trip kill through the smoke. And a part of me wants to ask the question, I, I don't think it's worth to smoke a heaven. Because you know that uh, yeah, if yeah. someone gets hit by it, he has to peek it. And if, if you have a boy state member who can actually hold that heaven, maybe that's what can stop him from at least doing that because you know he's gonna be, he can't resist. So I, I don't know if that's a thought, but you never know. With, maybe that's the counter to do it where you know that he's the only one on site. He's playing solo sites, so you do know that for a fact. Does see the jump peak skies, though. Has the op. A little bit of gunfire being exchanged in mid. No eliminations to speak of for either team. Question is, they've fallen for this trip drive time and time again. They're not going to fall for it this time. Take it out in B. Use that to clear things out. Going to be looking to get the dog. Doesn't spot him behind. Is the problem. Boise State, in fact, isn't even going to go through there. Waltz is just going to mow him down in garage with the Guardian. Boise State makes it a one-to-one -one trade. Throws out a bit of util to try to clear out C. Watch out for Cypher, though. And Boise State getting caught up on point. Now they have to do what or play against what Oregon State has been so good at, the retake. And they're they all going it? long. They do. Oh, I like this play for Boise State. The reason they're all going long is because they have their rolling thunder for this kind of retake. Skies gets one, does the retake. Here comes the rolling thunder. Great nade. Does have the showstopper available too. Gets one. It is now three v two still for Boise State. Wow! It does the jump peak there from Neo. But does not get him. I think he actually ended up hitting skies there, but it was through the wall. And Rio with these jump peaks, it seems like he can't be hit when he does it because he gets he dodges the, the bullets half. every time. But Boise State now on a 3-0 spree at the end of the half here, definitely ideal for him to go 8-4 because um, Oregon State's probably gonna have a little bit tougher time attacking with the Cipher Astra setup. Um, but Boise State doing at least a good job of having you know the drive to bring it back. Here, here, here we have the, showing the setups. Has a little small little you know trips of one you shoot and then the next one you know you run into so he definitely is, you, see, you know he's smirking every time yeah he, he's <laughs> like ah, i got him again god ah, they're going into you're, it again. Gonna, you're gonna smoke me you know what are yeah. you gonna do smoke me off it's just i'm gonna let all my trip wires do all the work exactly and so it is definitely a funny thing there boy state just playing a little default here not really committing uh they definitely have slowed down their pace because of the chamber now that they're playing a little bit slower, things might work out a little bit better for them. Just in the fact that they're not running into the trip, trip wires yeah. every single time. They're going to go slowly on to B. Damn, Watson gonna looked be like he might have been here. caught yeah. out in Util. It's not, not going to happen. They rotate back over to C. There's the Omenal. I like that. Doesn't end up stopping it, but 
I think he did see the chamber. Wallace gets a pick onto J Bag though. On the other side, both of them in actually. I think they got hit by the trip in garage. Yeah, yeah. And so they end up both going down there and just <laughs> dragonfly. Setting him up once again, but they're going to go to A site where he shouldn't be set up. But of course, they don't know that. So, get ready for Alden to sh literally clear every single type of little nook and cranny for all those trips. Left. Used to be these 360s. Here comes the haunt, though, for uh, I think it's Rio. Alden gets he was just running him. right into smoke, and that's the opening Alden needed. Gets his location oh, to reopen, wow. but still gets a double to make it three and two. Has the opportunity here and almost takes out Waltz, who's going to walk away with the triple. Waltz gets a quad. Okay, yeah, wow. And, and you know, I will say, Oregon is up 9-3, but it, it, that's 9-3. You know, it's... <laughs> Because we've been talking about curses all night here. It's the map pick curse, and maybe the 9-3 curse comes into play. I mean, when you go 9-3, you're definitely like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We go in that first round really bad here. I think the biggest thing that if Boise State wants a, a good chance of getting back in this game, uh, the pistol rounds to be really important. I think last round, like last half, we did see Oregon State kind of roll over the mm -hmm. pistol round because obviously they first died from paint shells right away, and that's not ideal. But... Uh, it definitely is going to be a big round here because that will kind of set the pace of the second half. Now that the Oregon State is the attackers, I think the biggest thing that Boise State needs to kind of look out for is their post plan ability because Oregon State has the cipher, has all the setup. So if they get onto site and set up, it's going to be really hard for Boise State to retake. Oh, just just kind of dislodge that cipher before they can get the spike down. Might be the key that Boise State is looking for as we head into the first match of the second half. <laughs> Even if he's on defense, he's going to get prevented from playing the game. Aldum does go across. Does see the Cypher smoke? Probably gets a little bit of it scared just because the Cypher has just been dominating this game. Aldum does kind of peek up here. I do like Boise State's kind of options of frenzies in these close angles here. Uh, you can see Oregon State kind of just still stay spread out, though. You know, to kind of play in that middle area, not don't want to commit too much. They know that Boise State obviously doesn't have the craziest means, but I do like the idea of pulling these trips back for this, you know, post-plant kind of idea. I see Astra slowly going along. The biggest thing here is going to be clearing corners for Oregon State. Uh, that's happened a lot. We've seen it in the highest levels of play, people just being not clearing the corners. And we're going to see Boise State, or so Oregon State, doing just that. And here comes their super bond. Look out for Holdem, though. He's going for the flank. Wow, Damien does get, his, does get his one in that little cubby there. Does get naded, though. Does go down. So the thing is, Neon kind of just got him there. Hit nowhere to escape to. It's a 44 now. This is like I said, this is now going to be the post plant from Oregon State that I said to be kind of worried about. Cypher can set up, has his camps. Alden's playing really close. Wow, and did a great job playing 2v2 right there. JMA gets two. Alden now goes in for the bait, so because he has a little low HP. And they do just like that, trade exactly what they wanted to do. Dragonfly is in there, does go down, and j Back gets a 4k. Great job overall. I think Boise State did a great job there of playing their numbers and then, you know, just playing calculated for that. And that's the first round, like I said, they needed for that piss round. It's very important. Teleport's ready. All it takes is one round at a time to start some sort of rally. Immediately... I'm out. I, I have to wonder, though. It, it's good that Aldum got the trip right out of the way beforehand. I do think he did run into it while trying to flank through A lobby, but luckily for him, Oregon State had already rotated all the way over to C, so he didn't have to face the punishment for that yet again. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's just... Overall, did a great job. Damiel got his one. Uh, ends up trading, though, with the nade. But now they're going to have the advantage of the guns, so it looks like you know Oregon State's probably going to be just looking for a bomb plant. Interesting strategy here for Boise State by just leaving B completely open. They're okay with just giving B up and playing retake. And that's exactly what Oregon State's going to do. They're just going to go straight to B, plant, and then Boise State's now be playing this retake option. And they do have the gun advantage, though, so definitely um, looking towards them. Skies gets one pick. That's big. It didn't look like Dragonfly actually had a gun there, so... You know, oh, they're saving us. True. Oh, wow. He is just he didn't even know he was there. He's just sprinting. I think Waltz just was two in the zone, and I hear them clocking behind him. And a defuse again. Yeah. They just six it. Pros don't fake. We know that. We do know that. And Boise State 9-5. I mean, 
Granted, it was a save round. Of course, that's just kind of the usual events that usually happen. Uh, this is going to be the next round. That's going to be the big round, I think, for Boise State if they want to kind of take over um, this momentum here is if, you know, they win this round because Oregon State obviously is going to have a gun advantage in this next round. But it was just a great job. They went B. They got the plan down, so, you know, obviously Oregon State's fine with that. Sky's going to go with the op, and then J-Bag actually going with the Vandal buy, so Boise State's actually committing a, a bit more to this bonus. They definitely know it's an important round for them to win here. Dragonfly plants the tripwire down in a familiar spot. It looks like most of their attention is still focused on B. Boise State's going to smoke that op to try to keep him at bay. Also keeping a watch over Garage. One of the members of the Beavers rotates over. Another smoke thrown out. They're just going to charge through the smoke right on to B. Can Boise State stop them again? A little bit of firing through the smoke and some damage, some chip damage. Actually, a good deal on to Rhea. Spike Boy. planted. Even though the spike is planted, Boise State again going for the post-plant game. It's working out for them as they get two versus one. Dymo with another. Drive it down to two. They try to stick it again. Oh. It doesn't work out for them. Look out for Rio on the flank. Wow, he gets only two. Has 24 health. So Boise State oh. practices it, but they weren't of where he was, and he gets the double right in their backs. Making it 10-5. Yeah, I'd say Rio had the flank slowly and Dragonfly held it down. It was like a 1v3, 1v4 in terms of just him versus the people, you know, in Nest. So Boise State just kept going going through that and he kept just shooting him through and you know Rio did a great flank here. They were not ready for this at all since they were so focused on Dragonfly. And just double kill right there. And that's a big round for Oregon State to win because Boise State committed to an op and a vandal there. So that's gonna be a save here from Boise State now. Oregon State isn't even going to be able to do a full purchase either. They're having to settle for a few Bulldogs, so that might be an opening little bit of crack to back. Wow! Dylan Oldham just gets oh. right in the face of the Beavers and takes them out with the frenzy. Whoa. What a rally from the Broncos! Could they get a flawless thrifty? I think they do! And turn it around 10 to 6. Wow. I mean, what a crazy play by Aldem. Just gets a stinger, goes crazy there. And the thing is, he actually messed up his uh, concuss by just an inch. And if he would have hit that, obviously, they already killed him anyways. But that would have got him all. And it was crazy because, you know, Raze goes for the thing. Great flash there. And just a great crossfire set up by Boise. Two and short and having Aldem just go long. And they just made the right read there. And that's a great... I think Ecos like that really show some great promise because... You have to actively call that thing out, and that's something that you've probably practiced. And, of course, it's fortunate when, you know, the enemy team goes into your plans, but the overall, they just happen, had to happen, right? So, Oregon State now looking for this A main kind of push here. One person on A, though. Only Aldum, as, you know, Breach comes around. I mean, maybe gets, that's yeah. all he needs. He gets one and alerts the Broncos, and now the reinforcements are on the way. The question is, do the Beavers still commit toward this A push? They're still putting down the trip wires and throwing out their util, so they're still going to go on to A as Boise State hangs back, yep. waiting for the post-plant game. So they're just letting him get sight here, and I think that's completely fine in terms of just making it sure, okay, we're just going to give him sight, we'll go from there. Uh, let's play post plan. They do. They know they have the gun advantage because they do know that you know Oregon State does not have guns. And Dragonfly gets a pick though, has the ult come down, Great concuss, concuss is like, I think, two or three there. And Oregon State playing a great post plan so far. And it's both of yeah. them who were hanging out. Both of them hanging out under heaven. We're not able to get any sort of value out of that position as all well as Boise State predicted they were there. Mowed them down with the Phantom. And now this is a completely different. Remember, Boise State was behind eight to zero, and now it's 10-7. That's true. I mean, they're showing some great merit here of just, hey, it is not over until it's over. Let's make sure that we play this, you know, as well as we can. I think that's the biggest thing is staying calm and then just doing what you practice. So, like, it's so easy to just be like, well, what we practice didn't work. But they, they definitely are just going with what they know and doing a great job with that. I think Oregon State is doing a great job getting on the side with these post plants. Right there definitely had a gun, extreme gun disadvantage. So, unfortunately, it just kind of Really hard to play that post plant there, but we'll see how this kind of goes on here. Skies does have the op once again. You can kind of see him always forcing those kind of things. Looks like the Beavers are going for a rinse and repeat onto A. Trying to make it work out again as Oldham was the only person there. Looks like he probably got a sight onto them. A few pings go out onto A point as well. So Oregon State still has that in their minds. Moving slowly up A lawn. But up from Tower here, up from Heaven, Oldham is going to actually just kind of duck behind. Try to time it out right so he can get a peek onto them as they push up. 
Q Absolutely smokes going up. down. Not quite, and it looks like the Beavers are kind of rethinking A now, opening up either B or C. And we're having kind of an intense stare down in C long yeah. right now. We have a staring contest if there ever was one. Skies is not going to let that up even if it kills him. He's holding it. See Astra Dragonfly playing on A though. Astra's still staying just C long. Don't know what they're waiting for. Maybe a, uh, a good, uh, I guess, just distraction. Oh, I hear Showstopper oh. run out, and it's gonna yep. spell doom for Dimeau. Larpsman also getting a pick onto Aldum. Oregon State is gonna take that as they're all clear to plant. It's just three left who have the hopes for the Broncos. Smoke thrown out for the Omen. Can they use that? Also, the Astro Wall has been thrown down, making it even harder for Boise State to retake. Skies can't really do anything with this op right now. He's gonna just have to wait for the ultimate to wear out. Or, or a yeah, smoke as well. Yeah, this ultimate and the smokes, just all the utility. What a risky teleport by Boise State. J made with yeah. the double. Great flash gets three. I wow, dragon fight. Oh, Dragonfly managed to get a hit on him with the camera. Jordan oh, on the defuse yeah. gets the ultimate victory. And Dragonfly is definitely that guy who is going to be your go-to for that situation. Because you know, as well. And it's not even just like Dragonfly, but you know as a player with the Cypher, he's patient. And then those kind of plays, that's just gonna, how he's going to be. You have to really force him out of his hole almost to get him going. Great. I, I like the uh, attempt there from that one. I think the problem was just that, you know, they just came up short and it sucked that, you know, there was two looking just right at him as they came around. But J-Bag did a Great try just getting those, you know, got his three, but the fourth one, Dragonfly, just being really a menace on the Cypher this entire map. Tier to Force being propped from, uh, popped from Skies now. And it is 11-7 here. Oregon State has two ults for the uh, opening here. Marina's Marie still trying to hold down Garage. Oh. Looks like Neon might have been poking out through there. It's just Nightfall is going to be thrown down by Oregon State, forcing Boise State to retreat in mass. Dog thrown out through Garage. Looks like it might have got a bit of chip damage. Meanwhile, Aldum and J-Bag, the dynamic duo, wow. both getting a double and pushing the Beavers down to just one. They know they're in Garage. J-Bag cleans things up. A triple and a double, that's a full house for the Broncos. Yeah, wow. I mean, they just kind of gave Oregon State a taste of their own medicine there, just shooting through the smoke and long, getting two, having that kind of garage area because Omen blinded, then gets hit by the dog, and then that's a great peek from uh, you know their teammate to go and shoot through there. So just overall some great play from Boise State there. I mean, Oregon State kind of uh, slowly kind of starting to feel the pressure a little bit. Uh, you, you're still up with three rounds, but it is 11-8, so you start to kind of sweat a little bit on this save and just start going like, okay, well, how are we going to win this game? Yep, and for many of the Boise State players, it is their first time. It was their first time on the stage playing this. So you can bet that... They're all playing together. They're in the arena. The lights are around them. It's 11 to 8. And there's got to be adrenaline pumping through the Broncos' veins as the early plant has gotten down. And Rayanna opens things up with a pick onto the Beavers. It's now 5 to 4, and the Broncos have three ultimates should they choose to use them to try to get this successful retake. Dime out now. Oh, Dime out. Wow. JBank both trying to hold down. Skies. Oh. Very clutch, 1-1, one, one, puts the Broncos to 11-9. That was a save oh. from Oregon State there, but they used a lot of resources for a save there. They used the rolling, oh no, sorry, that was Boise State's rolling thunder, we're good. I thought they used the rolling thunder there, but Boise State did a great job using the rolling thunder, secure the round. Um, that's good for Oregon State, because it was their save. Uh, it's funny, because you know Neon had a great grenade into that. Uh, Boombot, we've seen that a lot of raises where they kind of hit you that one, two. But it is now 11 9 here from starting at 8 0. Boise State slowly bringing it back. Definitely has some hope as this map continues on here as you know, Oregon State tries to find their rhythm on what they want to attack. Does have the Rolling Thunder here for this attack onto A site here, so definitely could look forward towards that. Skies gets a pick right away. Down a. And it's onto the spike, too. Yeah. So. That gives a lot of information toward Boise State about where Oregon State wants to try to push. And again, from heaven, it's been smoked off so many times, but Skies finally finds a way to make it worth. 
Now gets a one-to-one -one trade. Boise State still has the in-person advantage as the plant goes through. Boise State in this post-plant scenario has been thriving, much like the Beavers did in the first half. A double from Odom means Boise State is going to bring this within one round where they used to be eight rounds behind. Incredible. 11-10, and that's the biggest thing here is, is Oregon State's going to have to save again next round. It, it feels bad as Oregon State, and I'm surprised they really haven't took a timeout yet, to be honest here. Yeah, they because, still have it. Because it, it, the events that's been going on is save, buy, lose, save, buy, lose, save. Like It's just like when you go on a, when you start to just keep buying and then losing and saving again, that kind of mental state definitely does not feel good for you, and especially when you're about to see an 11-11 on your screen, potentially, with having another save go down for them. And we're going to see it here. So, you know, Boise going on another round win. It, the consecutive wins, I forgot at this point, is pretty insane. They've definitely brought it back here. And now is going to be 11 10. Uh, Oregon State still has the lead, but has to have a save round here. Rally thrown out onto points, trying to clear things out for the Beavers. That's a Neon big pick for them, gets yeah. a big pick onto Aldum. Considering also that Aldum has gotten doubles basically the uh, last few rounds, that's a big bit of uh, utility taken away from the Broncos to defend. They're going to have to retake. Oregon State moves back to see launch, just take a lone angle on this. The Omen teleport actually goes yeah, through that with was, it. Yeah, that was crazy because it was just right and long. Okay, they could look for the defuse here. Daimyo is stunned. It was at the hook with two health and just charges yeah. right through. It was a good try. Uh, the only problem was is they just had so many bullets and a lot of them alive. And Oregon State is now at game point. And I think that big pick was just, that opening pick was so, mm -hmm. I guess, impactful there. Because the moment that you don't have your album there and, you know, you just get a, a gun into your teammate's hand that's not a frenzy, I think it's a little bit of a difference. But uh, it's now game point here for Oregon, Oregon State. Boise State uh, looking to kind of hold on. They do have a lot of credits, though, so definitely not feeling it too much in terms of their buy. They have a full buy once again here. And here we go. It's 12-10. Match point here for Oregon State. And Boise State needs two wins in a row to get to overtime. Looks like they're going to throw a tripwire just in case there's any flank attempts. Guys holding down C Lawn and Oregon State is going to wait till they throw out the smoke. Oh. And he looks away. And Blarpson. Punishes him for it instantly. Yeah, he thought he had enough time to shoot the Haunt and TP, but they were definitely ready for that. Dragonfly gets another pick as well, and now Boise State, a 3v5 retake option on C um, with the Great Divide. And it's just looking really tough right now for Boise State's position here. Gonna tap. Hunters, or sorry, Rolling Thunder comes out here. And gets out him right in his tracks. Boise State in a tough position. They have to win here or else we are going to a game three. They try to defuse, but are immediately punished for it. Larpson and Waltz with the picks all up to Dime Al in a 5-1 to keep the game going. No big pressure. Tries to get one and is going to walk away. And nice tries all around. That is going to be it for the second round. It's all tied up one to one. And we're moving on to Bind to close things out for the night. And what a different match bind is going to be. I mean, the yeah. one thing that we've seen is if they play Neon, they, I wouldn't play that against the, this team at least because Dragonfly on this chamber, sorry, Cypher, makes it so hard for them to play the game. And the thing is, is he's going to pick it on bind. Like, we definitely know he's going to pick it on bind. But the biggest thing is I think if Boise State has a race player on their team, it makes it so much easier to deal with because those nades can just destroy those traps, right? So there's a lot to deal with here. Boise State you know, kind of brought it back, but at the end, Oregon State ended up finishing out here. So... But if that's a loss to be proud of, I would say Boise State still has a lot to be proud of in that match. To face, you know, to open it up 8-0 to zero and then bring it within yeah. just a few rounds shows a lot of tenacity for the Broncos. We'll see if they still have that tenacity to recover and ultimately get the win against the Beavers. This is not a match you are going to want to miss. We'll have the deciding match right after this.
NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Protecting your customer journey from fraud is critical. According to industry analysts, Count's AI-driven platform is the leading solution. From account login to digital payments, Count is recognized for both its customer impact and technology excellence. Learn more at Count.com. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Welcome back to the Boise State Esports Arena. We are covering what is turning out to be quite an exciting gridiron rivals match against Oregon State. The Beavers have proven to be a tough rival for the Broncos. Won the second game in Haven, so now in this best of three, we go to the final map, bind to see who will be the ultimate victor heading into tomorrow's football game, where the football counterparts for both universities will play each other. I'm your host, Jacob Jim Palmer, still joined by uh, Red Hots, uh, Brandon Red Hots, Kosniancic, and whoa, what, a, what a match that was. Boise State starting it off 8-0. to zero. There's so many great plays here that I think we have to cover both teams here to get the full picture. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. These plays are – there's so much happening, too. Like, when you're observing, it's so hard in these matches because – so much is happening. We've seen double breach ult for the Rolling Thunders going help, and we've seen the Cypher going through. You've seen so much utility going through with, like, Fade and everything, so it's hard to get, like, every point of view here. But, uh, obviously, we want to highlight these guys in, as much as possibly can because going to the game three, it's now 1-1. One, one. Uh, put it that even state here. And so very excited to see both teams here. And Bind also, just because it's such an interesting map, uh, I think we're definitely going to see the Rays come out here. Th this is what concerns me a little bit because if you're looking at the two things that trip the Broncos up so much, on Haven, the cipher, the yeah. trip wires, and the paint shells have also That's been. True. And we're going into bind, <laughs> so you know that you know that the Beavers are just going to find. Okay, we'll run it back. And and the one thing I, I definitely um, am maybe looking forward to, or are maybe hopefully seeing, is we've seen a lot of the VCT comms with the Viper and the Astra. And since Oregon State plays that Astra, I could definitely see them kind of going with that approach there because it makes it so hard for teams to be able to, I guess attack against that comp there so I can definitely see them kind of adapt to that but they do have the cypher in their sleeves like we always see that happen so uh, definitely excited to see I think team comps should be shaken up a little bit more uh, since Bind is such a unique map with all these TPs and these small divots I would definitely see the fade I think again maybe the Sova again but uh, overall looking forward to this map as a like map three yep and it's always the map that uh, our production staff Dal and Dalamino always likes seeing just because it's the one chance you can see the Yoru only to have his dreams crushed time and time again. But, you know, you can always hope that sometime during this season we'll see him at least once. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's more of a PRX thing. I think that's a little bit of difference. But we're going to a little bit to highlight some of this Oregon State's plays. Uh, Oregon State had a pretty dominating first performance here against Boise State. But I think the biggest strengths of Oregon State here was their ability to just basically really mess with Boise State and play very coordinated. We saw Dragonflights have such a great job on defense, and Oregon State always coming back with these options that utility-wise were kind of 
a little bit farther beyond Boise State. Uh, I think they used a really great combination of uh, utility to make it really favorable for their fights. Whereas, you know, Boise State definitely has a great job there, but I think that's what Oregon's strengths were, was that utility usage and how they kind of use their agent comfortability into it. But Boise State has been no slouch either. They had quite a stellar opening on Breeze, just using these long sidelines and was really kind of doing what the Beavers did in Haven on the second map. They were so good at the rotations and using mid to their advantage to get these sneaky flanks onto the Beavers that the Broncos, both teams have now had their very dominant opening and performance, and you still can't count out the insane rally Boise State had on Haven. They were down 8-0, to zero, managed to find it in themselves to rally it within a few individual rounds. So there's no telling what can happen here on Bind. Such a different map, but the stakes have never been higher for the Broncos. Can they ultimately win against the Beavers? We're going to find out really soon now. And what do you think the ultimate key will be for the Broncos? Because we've seen them dominate, and then we have see them, you know, just be trampled on as well. Uh, I think the biggest thing is sticking to what they've practiced and what they know. I, I think, obviously, the Cypher is not something you practice very much against. But I think being able to do the same strats, maybe a little slower or maybe a little faster, and then using kind of a raised nades or at least a certain utility with either Silva Shock darts or Sky or anything like that to kind of deal with those trips or deal with one of those agents picks. I think the biggest thing is at the end of the day is going what you're comfortable with and then adapting. I think the biggest thing is they have to adapt to Oregon State's play style, which is, you know, so much utility-based, you know, gameplay for them. As we head into bind, it would probably be very prudent to just remind Boise State one last time of Doc's keys to the game in Valorant, brought to us by our friends at Drop In Gaming. And Doc's keys to the game in Valorant are actually just going to have to be a fading memory for the Broncos there. So I hope they memorized it because the test is, in fact, now the pop quiz for the Broncos. And Autumn's going to be going on to the race for the first time. And I was predicting the Cypher is going to be used, but instead Oregon State doesn't bring out any Sentinel whatsoever. Yeah, they're actually going to go with what we what it's called, sorry, what the Valorant calls the Viper Sentinel. And basically that's what I was kind of talking about the pregame, where it's usually Astra sometimes, but also Brimstone is very comfortable as well. We've seen this a lot in VCT, you see a lot in Champions. This is like a standard bind comp, where essentially Viper is your Sentinel. They have their setup, they have their one ways, they have their wall, and basically they are setting up for the team in terms of that defense area, where you still have wall, that Brimstone smoke. And so, like I said, it's kind of that standard uh, area, whereas Boy State is doing the exact same thing with that Viper. Yep. And so, basically almost essentially the exact same comps. The only difference here is going to be the Sova uh, versus the Chamber Picks, and that's obviously very comfortness. The biggest thing that's going to help Oregon State with that Sova, though, is that more information they can gather in terms of, you know, that drone clearing close and then that dart kind of clearing the standard areas here. So I'm really excited for both teams, and, you know, we all there's going to be a Cypher, but, you know, I think their comp that they're going with is basically essentially Vipers just turned to that Cypher. And I think just a really... Overall, I'm excited to see here. I think Bind is a map where it can get really hard to attack, where if, you know, you kind of get stopped early on in the game, it feels like it's really hard to, I guess, adapt to it. Also, Tethered Realms on Aldum, not a fan. Immediate opening for the Broncos onto Baths are going to take that peak right away. But Oregon State looks like they're going to be focusing on a B while keeping the teleport option open for them. A lot of firing wow. through smokes right now, and they just immediately go to the teleport. So now the two Broncos who were in Bass are going to have to have to defense of their lives, and they start that off by taking oh, out Wolf. Oh, good nade. Shells. Oh, the traumatic flashbacks come back in force for Boise State. Now... They are trying to even things up, though. They are still trading one-to-one. -one. Dragonfly is going to get the slight advantage for the Beavers, three-to-two, as they move on to the plant. Dymau still has only 68 health and full health oh. for Boise State's Viper. They even it up yet again onto the two-two. Now what? What if Boise State gets it in just one round? And I can tell that I am not going to last through this match. <laughs> yeah, because that was a cr I mean. They, they go long and they just do the 40 TP, but Boise is actually ready for this play. They have two sitting in showers ready for it. Obviously, the, the, the paint shells are just, 
He is so good at those grenades, I will say. You can tell he's played a lot of rays. And still just a great defense here from Boise State. They do get one. Of course, they get one for one there. They do the plant. So my biggest thing is I could definitely see Oregon State in a world where they actually end up forcing here. Um, they had one alive. They got a lot of kills. They have a lot of money. But it seems like they're going to say, okay, let's play the safer option and let's buy third round. But overall, I mean, what a crazy first round. I mean, the biggest thing about these rounds, Gem, is they're so fast. I mean, yeah. there's going from like, okay, you know, a little one for one here to three for three, you know, everything going on here. So, you see flashes happen to both sides of the sky here. It's kind of both teams have matched each other's play style yeah. and immediately up toward Hookah. Boise State gets a whole lot of wow. pants. They might actually pull off a flawless down, for the second round. What a turnaround, and they do. But anyway, like I was saying, you know, it was kind of on Breeze, Boise State had the fast gameplay, and then on to Haven, all the Cypher tripwires just forced Boise State to slow down. So now that we're on to the third map, both teams are back to playing at full, yes. full speed. The biggest thing, though, is, that, is they're playing at full speed, but they have Viper Brimstone. So that was, definitely slows the game thinking, a little bit. I was thinking this was going to be the biggest slog. <laughs> low visibility everywhere. Yeah. Smokes through. No, everyone's just going to run through the smokes and, and take each other in, in some very clutch duels. Yeah, we do have the lineups here, but we have seen a lot of flashes and stuff like that as well. A little lineup there. That's probably for you all. Oh, Neon gets picked, but... Whoa! J back gets three to react and whoa! Dragonfly gets one, does get dogged. He's gonna pee the corner now to the classic. And decides not to, they do have the bomb playing safe. Oh wow, Dragonfly gets another one. Still two to one, so as long as Boise State is disciplined, make sure I like the that spot. they take this is the, the Yeah, that's how you guarantee it, is you play the stack that you people used to do in CS all the time, the boost. But just did a great job there. And J-Bag went absolutely it was crazy. The greatest play that we will never see. Yeah, and it's so hard to catch every little moment there. But trade one, and then he gets three with the Spectre against Phantom. So whatever happened there, I think it, it might have been the Stim. The Stim might have just let him really go crazy there. But that's a big round from Boise State there, going up 3-0. And now Oregon State has to save against, you know, all the guns that Boise State just got for free. They don't have to buy them. And here we go, you know, Oregon State kind of playing that, you know, A short here. They are at a gun disadvantage. Aldum can get a big nade here. Oh, does get a lot of damage out here. Actually, he's going to go back. There's the, the nade. Four. Going to take out the Silver Dart. Oregon State moving quite fast onto the point. Is going to get their plant down. Aldum still really the only one over wow, to A. As the rest of Boise State rotates over. They actually are looking to do sort of a pinch here as the rotation through Marion and Short, and it's going to work out for the Broncos. They managed to make it 4-4, four to four, now 4-3. Four to three. As Riena gets the double, Dymao also with a pick of his own. Boise State working great on the retake here. A oh. shot through Bass is just going to miss. We're going to see if Boise uh -oh. State can still save that showstopper. showstopper. Sure, it's around, and the Broncos now have to do a 1v2. Everything's moving so fast and tilting back and forth so quickly. Just, oh, I was thinking he had a chance there on yeah. dodging that blind, wow. but oh, holy moly. That, Oregon State. Yeah, that went from a very, very favorable Boise State kind of situation here. The problem is Sky is missing that, sh that pivotal that, that, shot. That really, really hurts the round there because your op goes down, and next thing you know, they get the space because now the showstopper is mm -hmm. online. That's what happened. He got the showstopper from that kill. And sometimes so. it comes down to if that one left click yeah. lands. And that's, that, that's, that is the kind of thing with the op, though. The op is a very high risk, high reward weapon where if you miss that shot with how nerfed it's been over the time, you know, it shoots so slow. It's on the chamber op. That's different. <laughs> and there it is. There, yeah, that, there it is. The okay. Op. If the chamber op, you can miss a couple shots and you'll be fine there, but. Let's just say going would worked out for them so well in round one, having two hanging out on Bass. Meanwhile, they have no one looking out on A short, and that just opens it up for the Beavers to charge right through, but they turn around oh, with strike. style oh. and get three onto Boyce, Oregon State. Now the Broncos just have to defend four to two, a bit of firing through the smokes. The Beavers are left a little wanting. They still have the spike down, so they did not get the plant in what was kind of a disastrous play for them and quick reaction time for the two hanging out in baths. Absolutely, and j -Bag is actually just having a crazy game right now. You know, two controllers, but I think he's not really a controller. He's looking like Marv out here with all the kills going. Damiel gets spray through there, does get down, fire spin. One for one, does get flashed, and he should be able to get through the last one there. And 
Overall, Boise did a great job that round. Um, there's a lot of chaos going on there, but interesting kind of play there by Boise State, just, you know, playing in showers here and just allowing them to kind of get on side. They knew that they had the Fibers Pit. Maybe they kind of wanted to play into that almost. But great job using their ults there. We saw the Brimstone ult Orbital Strike come down, kind of give them more space, and then, you know, get those free trades there. And Oregon State kind of goes down 4-1 here. Even though it's 4-1, uh, these I rounds. don't know. Yeah, even though it's 4-1, yeah. uh, my circulatory system is telling me <laughs> otherwise right now. These rounds are pretty crazy. Even these, I will say, even these save rounds that are quote unquote usually supposed to be stops are wild. And here comes Oregon State with the save here. Oh, I like this double peek here. Boy State. Oh, oh they had his knife that out. At yeah. All. Boy State is doing a lot of these kind of like pair plays. Um, they're doing a lot of two like pairs of two playing these areas and like just like this. You know, kind of having that long where they have two of them to play one on each side. What a start for the Broncos. There it is, yeah. A little bit of more screen time than I would have wanted to see there. Yeah, but they a little managed scary. To, managed to close it out. Yeah, definitely uh, you missed a couple of shots, but this is a great job from BSU because even at the very, at least at like the very least, uh, you're training one for one there. And I think that's a great job for Boise, just kind of coming up with these plays of, okay, yes, we're on defense, but let's get some space. I think that's a big thing about defense that a lot of people don't talk about or maybe don't notice in these games is you have to be able to take space aggressively to kind of get that good defensive angles, right? That's how you get that defensive to feel a lot worse than it is. And Rariana looking for that kind of Viper's Pit in this short area to kind of hold them down. And that's what they're going to do. thrown out pretty yep. early as Boise State seems to be pretty cognizant of Oregon State's affinity for a short. Viper Spin is going to throw down, make it really hard for them to push through, but there they go. Boy State wow. just hangs back, and Daimau is not going to be able to keep the defense going. Meanwhile, they don't realize, though, that this Viper is right behind them. He's actually going through lamps. They do manage to get the spike down, and there goes the Orbital Strike. Not going to pick up anybody. Oh, that was tragic. It's kind of came out of reaction speed right there. Oh, great flank. Dragonfly, you can always respect him. You know, he's always on the different side, flanks, everything. Has two smokes for J-Bag. J-Bag has been playing quite well already. Is Voln. Two mollies to match yeah, each other. Yeah. Didn't mean he, could, he couldn't even get half. I, I do want to, you know, kind of point out Oregon State's adaptability is pretty impressive. I mean... They, they were down quite bad from, you know, these save rounds. They lost, you know, against, you know, Boise State's bonus, you know, going by save by save. But then this round, you know, last two rounds, or last, last round, I should say, they had some really clean rounds. And they're actually going to take a timeout time here from Boise State here, which I, I can agree on. Uh, Oregon State's momentum that last round was pretty convincingly. And I think that's definitely a way of, okay, well, what do we want to do? And, you know, overall, I, I just think, you know, timeouts are, of course, always a good idea. At the end of the day. Now, always good to have your coach in there, just someone who's an outside yeah, observer, exactly. someone who doesn't have – I mean, I, the coaches want to win, so there's still a little bit of adrenaline, but it's nothing like if you're on stage and actually playing. So oh, of course. having that more rational mind kind of come in who's been watching as a third person is always valuable. And, and it can always be a thing where, like, you know, the players are going back and forth in terms of, like, you know, how they should have done something or – not saying this is not something that happened. We're saying this is what can, can happen from time You know, IGL or something like that. So sometimes the coach comes in. Okay, let's just do this one. Let's let's mm -hmm. let's confirm this one here, or let's just say, hey guys, let's you know, how do we play against this raise? I guess, or let's just say, you know, go from there. So I would say, out of all the games that we host here at Boise State Esports, Valorant is just just kind of by the very nature of the game. It gets, it has the most tension. It has yes. the most build up by far. Because, you know, you look at Rocket League, and no doubt we have some exciting plays in Rocket League, but when they get a goal, usually the players just fist bump and they're cool yeah. and chill. Overwatch, the mat, the action is just again and again and yeah. again that you don't have time to cheer after every team yeah. fight win. But with Valorant, when they run around, you can hear it throughout oh, the whole absolutely. building. And, and I think it's because you have to put so much attention to this game. It's like, you know, these tactical shooters, like you don't have time to blank out for a second because you blank out for a second you're gone like you have to you know exert so much focus in these maps that it really takes a lot out of you to focus on these maps so i mean you know going into it and just winning a round is so big every time it's just you know exciting because you have that downtime in between rounds is always fun to use as well 
A lot of smokes being thrown out and a lot slower gameplay than we've been using. It looks like that timeout kind of reset yeah. everyone's mentality. Yeah, they went from, okay, we're going crazy to let's yeah, slow the throw. pace down a little bit and let's see how patient each other are. Was they throwing a lot of yeah, util yeah. out on the hookah, but... I love the colliding oh. hawks there, just kind of right by each other. Oregon State is going to decide oh, to choose go on to A as oh, well, and that wall's just beautifully placed yeah. to take the op out of the equation. This guy doesn't quite know what to do. He's going to have to go back, runs into the wall, and reposition oh, is going to go to heaven instead. Look at his lineups. He is always ready to go. Rio is playing really aggressive here. Gets two! Wow! And that's a great play from Rio. And oh, wow, great shot from the sky is there. It's actually really hard to hit that shot when you kind of have only the head glitch to work with. Sky is kind of does, definitely is not going to miss this shot again. He's like, all right, I'm ready for this one. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there he goes. And of course, Boy State still has to go in and defuse the actual spike itself here. Oregon State does have the Hunter's Fury, and it looks like they have lineups from Dragonfly as well. So that's going to be very hard to fuse it. And they're not going to use a single ounce of their ults. Oh, and they managed to catch Boise State in the back as well as Viper Arena was repositioning. <laughs> now it is just that, twos. That, those three alive at the end there is actually like a nightmare. Like, you have <laughs> Brim line up with his mollies. You have the snake bites from Viper lineups. And then you have Hunter's, you have Hunter's Fury and Shock Darts. Like, mm -hmm. pressing Diffuse in that bomb, there's just no way. I mean, that's just, I don't know. I mean, with all the fast gameplay, we kind of concealed how how sloggy these kind of compositions can be. Yeah, because exactly. Because got so much... You got so much uh, sight denial. You've got so much crowd control. Oh. It can be hard to push Watch through. Watch contact. Neo does have a nade here, but look how close Skies is playing. Gotta be really careful Takes here, finish. though. Takes a dink. He's gonna go through, tries oh, to catch wow. up, and is just gonna teleport away from that one, managing to survive to fight another day. A few shots taken through the smoke because he knows he's there. Rarina hanging out right on side as well is gonna throw out a snake bite. Oregon State now moves on to the point. We hear Showstopper brought out by the Broncos this time. But at the most, <laughs> at the most exciting moment, they're going to be oh, waiting for shoot it. doesn't even get the shot oh. on. Oh, the Broncos. They had their plan, but it didn't quite come together. 2v2 still, though. And now it's a 1v1 scenario One here. Daimo, the IGL, the, the young gun at this moment, does not know where Dragonfly is. Who's just sitting in hookah? Oh, 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 he misses! Such a great, you know, good try from either of them. They had really no idea where the other Dragonfly is sitting on top of hookah window. Wow. Uh, it was so unfortunate here because, you know, Aldem probably got a lot of damage off, but unfortunately it just, just kind of runs out of time here. And just, you know, Daimyo just kind of went for the spray, whereas they had the Vandal. Uh, Dragonfly kind of can you know, had his thoughts and just one tapped him right there. Uh, just a crazy round by the two of them at the moment here. And it is now 5-4. So close game at, you know, going back and forth here. We're going to see the Tour de Force coming out here. Just kind of do a little bit back and forth. <laughs> look at these little spots. I mean, I've got your trail. sometimes it's just pretty funny to look at that. Going back now. To, uh, the Seekers coming out here from Morgan State, they're probably to fall in here. I will say, Neo makes it really hard for Boise State to kind of react, because he's making so much, or, or Neon, I should say, making so much space with these blast packs. And wow, look at Rio just kind of die. You know, warped him, I guess. Both of the yeah. skies are matching each other with doubles, and the Seekers are wow. thrown out by Boise State. It is now down to 2-2. Two, two. Can Dime out clutch it after he got that double? So oh. we're looking at the, the drone, and he takes him out. And the Seekers are also going to find Oregon State. Boise State now knows that they can defuse on point. He's going to use the Wolf to buy even more time. And the Broncos oh, wow. open it up again. Just barely. It's going to be the time differential that did it. <laughs> A little bit of shooting over the head. You can tell both teams. Or the nerves are getting to Oh, them. yeah. I mean, it's a really high tense situation. I mean, there's just so many trades going on here. You've seen, we see, like, okay, nothing for 30 seconds, one kill each, three kills each at that point. And the next thing you know, it's a 1v2 scenario here. So these rounds are just basically, you know, going so slow and then end up just kind of bursting out of time here. So definitely looking very, a lot, you know, very much forward to it. And it's a 6 4 here. Uh, Boise State leading, of course, you know, this is definitely known to be a little bit more defensive sided map here. So if Oregon State gets one to two more rounds, I think they're very, very content with that. 
Oregon State now moving out, trying to split things a little bit between A and B, but mainly putting a lot of pressure through baths. See, they're gonna be, their Viper's gonna be first to go all the way back to spawn here as Boise State is making quite an aggressive push and oh, Dragonfly wow. are gonna trade one for one. Raina putting the snake bite down and an orbital strike pushing Boise State off the point and Showstopper as well. That was a really great timed attack there from Morgan State. Having the orbital strike push them off into the uh, Showstopper is honestly a really great play for Morgan State here. Boise State in that. The uh -oh. snake bite is not going to be a thing to use in a 1 3 scenario. He's yeah. just going to go. Oh, wow. Through. Man, just to pick up one, though. Every single round, it seems, has come down to a 2 on 1 or a 1 to 1. Here we go. 1v2 here. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, Checks their own angle. Yeah, I'll say. You know, good try there, though. But I, I definitely do want to highlight that play that, that Oregon State made that, that round. I mean, the overall strike to push I them into the showstopper <laughs> is so smart because, you know, it forced them to literally die from either one. You got to pick one. And so I think that's a great job there. Uh, they got, I guess, decently mm -hmm. lucky with them not being right next to each other. But uh, still, overall, a great heads up play from Oregon State that kind of I highlighted earlier, which is they do a great job of using their utility. I think they, they really are a utility team, and they do a great job of that. Hunter's Fury is now up again. Uh, Blarpson definitely has it available. I have not seen that just yet. Oh my gosh! Hunter's <gasps> Fury always it's two of them. from Blarpson. Whoa! Whoa. Boise State, are you Spot kidding me? Eight. Predicted exactly where they were, said, hey, they. They've been in baths opening yep. every single time. I'm just going to aim there, and it's going to pay off in spades for the Beavers. But now Boise State has managed to even this back up to a 3-2, so it's still within the realm of possibility for the Broncos as the spike is down. Rarina now going to throw out the snake bite. Rio gets the pick on Disguise. It's all down to Viper. Firing through the snake bite gets one. Now it's one to two. Can he take the spike? Oh, oh gets... And gets flanked off from the side. And that's exactly kind of what Oregon State was looking for. They ended up going 6-6. Six, six, and so that just shows you right now, though, that these teams are quite even on the playing field. And I, that is just, I don't know, it's some crazy plays going on here in terms of <sighs> ripping a Sova ult. That just shows how heads up and not like, you know, the, the things they're noticing, right? They notice that they've always played two in bathrooms. He just rips the ult, gets two of them, and they sit together and he gets two of them off the right of the bat. I mean, getting two kills off the right of the bat is quite crazy here on attack on bind, so. We've got a lot of, Whoa. we've got a lot of love in Twitch chat right now for Dymo. New kid on the block, and you were mentioning tactical shooters in general. You mentioned CSGO earlier. That was Dymo's game before he moved over to Valorant, has been playing it since beta, and really enjoys just kind of what makes Valorant Valorant, the yeah. abilities that we're seeing right now and how both of these teams are using them. And he's going to use one of those abilities right now. Throws out the dueling dogs, actually. Both of these guys seem to have it out for each other. And man, as we head into the second half tied six to six, I can hardly stand it. It is quite even up to him, and Pistol Run's a big round because it gets a lot of momentum for each team. Goes out of the... Gewalt gets him with the right click, though, and then Rio trades Barbson down. 3v2 still. Does get him down. It is now 2v2. J-Bag did a great job last time. They already get on sight, but they just heard them go TP, so now we have to look for the counter TP. J-Bag, okay, yeah, so he, he wants it, but he knows the right play is to just have him kind of have it. He, they do know he's lit. Uh, not, not how much, but... If there's one person to clutch this, though, Neon is definitely it on the top the of that paint shells glitch. to yes, do it as well. All right, we're all thrown out. And the paint shells gonna go long toward baths. Moves toward. Oh, oh great the play there, yeah. yeah. And these rounds, Gem, are, are so explosive is a word I'd use. It's like uh, there's a diffuser, a hidden diffuser in every round of like how long does it take for that to go off for these rounds to really pop off because. Once the first kills happened, there was the rest of the eight kills that happened within the next 10 seconds of the round there. So it is quite crazy just to see on how explosive these guys are. And I think that's kind of how the nature of bind is, though. Like, you know, you play so slow, wait for something to happen. Once it does happen, you go crazy. And I like Boise State's play here. They have three uh, kind of going inside short here, looking for a, a push out. And the wall's going to go up, and they're going to play on the wall here. Oh, look at... 
Look at Oregon State, though, yeah. is pushing through a short. They're getting oh. quite aggressive on this defense. It's going to pay out for them as they take out Rarina. Now Boise State is going to move on to the point very fast before Oregon State can make it back, move up towards heaven, get the spike down. Now can they survive the retake? <laughs> Look at the smoke field from all the Bristons. Yeah. <laughs> short is just completely smoked out, and there's just a lot of space that Oregon State is getting. BSU Skies does get him, though. And now he has a shorty going to U-Haul. Gotta be careful with Skies. Yeah, there it is. It does have the, you know, the paint shell still. Dragonfly still has a shorty. It does go for the gun, dies. That's a classic. I, I, I don't know why. I love when you see the deaths of they go for the gun. <laughs> they, they, they didn't see the, it's like a little, you know. It's, bit, it's, why, it's yeah. why Riot themselves made a banner about it, you know. They're reaching for the gun, but absolutely, it's, there's just, a bear it's, trap there. It's so funny just to see that because, you know, he gets his kill and he's like, all right, I'm going to go for the Spectre. And then you but, just shoot through and you get him. It's an art, but it's the RGX. It looks so good. Yeah. I mean, it looks so great carrying that cosmetic. I have to go for it. Oh, absolutely there. And it's now 8-6 here. Um, Oregon State obviously going to have the buy here with the Vandals and Phantoms, whereas Boise State's going to be actually, you know, more, more so with the uh, bonus here from the attack. And they do have the one advantage with the orbital yeah. strike, so Th should push come to shove, that could be a key deciding factor. Oh my gosh, she might use it. Thrown out through bats. Considering the fact that they're all so bunched up, maybe if they can predict well here, they can see where a lot Oregon of State damage set up. that all, all of them took actually from that nade. Lucky for them, they do have the one whole team healer. Yep. Daimao holding down Fight on the down sky. Head. Meanwhile, speaking of skies, Rio is going to get the first pick onto Oldham. Dragonfly now up opening up the wow. gap. For Boise State and Daimao can't do anything in the five and one, unfortunately for him. It goes back to just being apart by one. Yeah, and the flawless uh, is, I mean, that was fast. <laughs> I mean, you saw Boise State kind of get onto site there, get the first pick, but other than that, they just kind of or almost got the first pick, sorry, but just got absolutely gunned down at the end there. And Rio, 18 kills in the sky initiator. These initiators are built different. We have J Bag pulling a Marv right here. 16 kills on him. You do not see Brimstone usually that high on the list here, but he's definitely making controller kind of seem like it can make a lot of things happen. We move into yep. round 14 now. Boise State still trying to clutch onto this narrow lead that they have. It's going to have their location revealed quite quickly. And look at that push from the Beavers. They go all the way up to Fountain. Luckily for the Broncos, they're able to trade two to one in that scenario. So now they're going to maybe open things up toward B. There's only one left on B from the Beavers. It's Going to be a firefight between them. Gets the Wolbane through Hookah. And now Boise State has won every engagement thus far. Is up four to two. They're going to go ahead and plant. Yeah, and Boise State up four to two right now. This is definitely a good round for them to keep having. They do the tour de force for next round. And, and still like have the this. orbital strike as well. Yeah, I like this. And maybe some sort of uh, Molly lineup as well. But maybe it could be going for a flank. Uh, I don't know. With all these guys, I would not be surprised if every single one of them had a lineup. Yeah. It's actually quite interesting. I'm not seeing Oregon State move. Okay, no, they're still there. They, they yeah, stayed put they, for so long. I was wondering if we had a de deconnection issue. But yeah, no. they're looking to save. I mean, they, yeah, they've they yeah. bought and so, like, you know, saved a couple rounds now. And I think they want the biggest advantage to them. And that's just, you know, going to be holding it. Even though it is a bulldog, it's still better than having nothing. Uh, they're going to go with that option. Boy State going to have the four alive as well. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sky's you know, pops that two to force next round. Always see him, you know, doing a great job on those. And he does a pretty good job of like popping it consistently. Uh, the biggest thing is that Boise State has the advantage of is this orbital strike, right? It's always kind of keeping it alive here. And just such an aggressive play there by Oregon State and just kind of pays the price for it. But now it is now 9-7. Boise State goes up two rounds here. Seekers available on the side of Oregon State versus the side of, you know, Two to force and the orbital strike here. Looks like Boise State uh, Skies is gonna, not going to be popping that just yet. Um, I, I'm really interested to see if they want to use this orbital strike for more of a, uh, a site clearing thing or more of a post plant thing because both are very, very valuable. Boise State looks like they're favoring B. But now with Waltz getting the demo wow. onto Skies, that might put a damper on their ambitions to push through there. Damio slowly walking towards Hookah here. Three on the side of B here for Oregon State. So Boise definitely going to be pretty careful here. Got a pretty good spread out by Oregon State, I'd say. A lot of things opened up here 
Aldrin's going to take the full decay. Got to be careful about peeking here because it's still decayed. Off. Double peek here. Gets a bulldog. Oh, great shot from Aldrin. You know, it has a great angle there. And it seems like Boy State is going to be committing to this A site. Pushing down, the only one not on A is Dimeout, but that might actually turn into some sort of pinch here through A short onto this Brim, who already oh, took wow. out Arena. Can Dimeout clear in things oh. up as the Seekers also go out from Oregon State onto the point. Now they have the advantage. Boy State's location is going to be revealed. Oldham having to clutch it out. Oh, so That's close. That's able to do it. It goes down to a 1-1, one, one, which Oregon State wins. And now we're back to just one point separating the and, two teams. And, I, I mean, Neon made such a like, heads-up play here. You see him satchel him off the spike defuse, actually. And not only that, but it pushes him far enough where they can spam through, and they kill him through spamming it. So, I mean, just overall, I, I definitely love just seeing how Oregon State kind of plays these rounds here, especially Neon on this raise. He looks so comfortable and just doing a lot of great things here. Uh, Boy State's still doing a great job. You know, 9-8. Uh, we'll see two to force is proc'd here. You Maybe looking play. for a Vibers, uh, Vibers Pit play as well. Going a lot faster this round. Still having that kind of double B. Here we on a kind of Vipers wall on A site here, but he doesn't have to commit too much yet. Aldum's going to slowly clear these showers. Did use his boom bot, so... A lot of firing to try to get the wall bang. Neon is still going to hang the same. Yeah. We do hear the tier to force from Boise State. Oh, a little strike. bit of everything thrown out. Seekers and Orbital Strike. Double. Oregon State answers that back with their own. Boise State is going to find themselves at a one-person deficit now. S looks like they're going to be swapping over to at least a short. No, they're going to do the full rotation yeah. over to B. And, and, you know, Oregon State does realize that, hey, they're probably not going to full rotate. But they do have Skies sitting in Cubby there, so they could look for an A re-hit with Skies kind of on site hearing them run away. But, but talking about Sky, uh, he's, uh, the Brim, okay, the Brim's going to go all the way through Cave. Going for the long route here to try to flank him. So Skies is going to live to fight another day. They're going to yeah. use the stim to get on to point. Moving on to it, Marina taking the long angle through Hookah. Oh, Hunter's Fury! Oh, Hunter's Fury right off to Boise oh. State. They still managed to plant. But Rariana is very low here. Rio gets one kill on the skies. Now it's a 1v4 situation with 33 HP remaining. We'll see how many he can get here. And this long gets round waltz taken is all for naught. Thing is, though, despite oh, yeah. that pick, Ariana still had to face a 3v1, wasn't able to do it, but manages to get one pick. Now it's going to yep. be tied again, 9-9. Nine to nine. This is definitely looking like a pretty crazy scenario here. Just back and forth with these teams. It seems like they neither one really wants to give up, and they just keep adapting to see who can really take it home here. And... A great timeout here from BSU. I think this is a good opportunity for that timeout. You've had so much back and forth. This is kind of a timeout where you almost want to take a breather. I know. You definitely just want to breathe a little bit. I don't bit. want to take a debreather. I need the defibrillator is more like <laughs> it. Yeah, they can kind of like, all right, you know what? Like, I, you know, they're doing a great job from both teams there, but you just kind of slow the pace a little bit because, wow, these games are quite crazy. I mean, everything is just going back and forth. There are the five players who are trying to clutch through this win. I, I, I got to say, you know, these, these gridiron rivals are always done in preparation for the football match tomorrow. I would dare the football teams to try to come up with a more exciting game than this because yeah. this has been so close. I mean, the first game, like, obviously it was like, okay, that was, you know, not too close, but second game was crazy, 8-0 to, you know, 13-10, and then now we have 9-9 with this is just nonstop action here. Or I think it was like, what, 13 Eight or nine, actually. But nine, nine here. A lot of ults available for both teams. Both showstoppers available, and both fibers fit. So we actually have the same ults from both teams here. Uh, I love to see kind of how they use those. You're going to see the dog use. Oh, great shock dart. Did a lot of damage from that. Good flash out, though. And one CP, so they know that there actually could be a man up now. Wow, Waltz. Boise State yep. charges through using the Judge, actually, to get the pick on to Blarpson. It's still going to be even 4-4, and Boise State is going to be down a little in their health, but Dimeau is there to heal them all up. Now Oregon State on the retake. I actually don't know, realize if they know that the Sprim is still hiding out in Elbow. 
Yeah, and the thing is, they do have the Showstoppers both available, so I would not be surprised because he has Showstopper propped. Wow, he gets one with the Judge. Gets two. He's like on three. Oh, here comes the J-Bag lineup, though. He pops it up. He should play time now. It should be landing. Yep, there it is. And here comes the Showstopper for long. <gasps> Look at J-Bag positioning. One enemy oh. Wow. Wow. What a play from Oregon State. They basically... Went all in on the showstopper. That hoping was that, landed. that was so close from J Bag. That was a really smart play. Oh, they won it! Oh, are you kidding me? 0.11 seconds <laughs> left, and it was so close there. I mean, J Bag honestly secured the round by just going through the smoke for the, you know, the showstopper. What a great heads up play there. He knows what they're trying to do, and he ends up buying just enough time, and it's all because of the lineup that Molly was there for a couple more little seconds. Wow, what a crazy round. I thought for sure. Oregon yeah, State's I thought they had it for sure. Uh, but unfortunately, wow. Rio, 22 kills in the sky too. There, here comes the showstopper from Boise State. Showstopper Does not find anyone Broncos and ends up, yeah. yeah. Does, this judge is getting a lot of value though. Bit of healing. From Daimao on to Boise State. They managed to get the plant and they have the person advantage. Four to two. But this pinch up through A short might be working out for the Beavers. They're going to throw out the paint shells, try to mow through the Seekers. Hawk thrown out, going to blind. Rio takes advantage of that. Now it's all up to Waltz. Wow. He's going to fall to the three that Boise State has. Now it's 11 to nine. And, you know, these these rounds are definitely looking crazy just because, you know, all these trades are happening. Boy State goes up 11-9. I don't know how... Okay, Oregon State's eco is definitely back to how it was. They had a little save last round. And this is going to be a really big round for both teams. If Boise wins it, it kind of has that little bit of relief off their shoulders. It's not over yet, but at least knowing that you're at overtime at the very least is definitely nice. And, of course, Oregon State, if they win this, is be huge because they have to save again. <laughs> and so this is going to be a big round from each team here. Doing the same thing, though. Boise State going with the exact same offense, going fast A. Look at that. They know this judge in U-Haul is just doing such a good job. And here comes the... Oh, but Neon does get the kill through the wall there. Putting a damper Look at Skies. on Broncos' enthusiasm. Skies can't go through yeah. baths for support right now because this Viper is holding him off just with the snake bite and takes him out as well with the Spectre, no less. Yep. On a save, Oregon State is get, might get the win when they most need it. Dimeau might be the difference here, though. He takes out Walt. He's currently... Oh, wow. And the quick teleport. They're just gonna abandon the Viper's Pit entirely and get him through the teleport as well. Dragonfly tries to teleport, but Dimeo was thinking ahead of him, and that could be the difference for Boise State. They've evened it up. To Oral strike three. available too, and he goes to elbow. They think he might be playing a uh, lineup just like he did last round, but this time he's actually playing an elbow. Rio gets a kill onto Rihanna. Rihanna, Rihanna. But still, 3v2 here. Might even, here. Yep. Might even have the opportunity Oh, here Daimyo, the and there's the orbital strike. Hits it down. He has a flank, and they have no idea where he is. 1v1, One One has the lineup. Oh, oh, just barely pulling it out there. J-Bag puts the Broncos up to match point. And what match a point. play by J- they, BSU was a total there. They have the Viper's Pit. They know they're at a disadvantage. It was a 3v5. They go through the TP. He waits in TP, evens it up a little bit, and just does a fantastic job of- I would say J-Bag does a fantastic heads-up play. He knows, hey, I played long last time with my lineup. I have Orbital Strike this time. I'm going to play Elbow, ult in first tap, and then have a flank. So just did a great job there. And Boise State is now at game point. It is now 12 to 9. And, I, you know, Oregon State's eco is not looking the best right now. And <laughs> ultimate with this judge is just so funny. He pays and they both had judges, so he won the judge war. Yeah, he had to pay a lot of health for that. He's only down to 15. Oh, but Boise State doesn't even look like they're going to be going off day. They're happy with oh, the pick, yeah. but they've got their sights set on B. Moving through Hookah, going to get the plant down, and heal up Oldham from that yep. judge fight. And, and Oregon State thought they were going uh, A with that you know, that race play, but it seems like Boise State played slow, seekered, and then just got the kill right away. So 3v5 here for Oregon State. They don't have the best guns either. 
But we will see kind of how this last standoff happens. Will this be the end of the match, or will they come? Rio gets one. Demio trades. 4v2. Damian looks one, gets gets last one, and Boise State win. What a phenomenal match, Jim. That was cr absolutely crazy. Yeah, uh, could you have imagined a more nail-biting opening for Boise State's Valorant fall season? What an incredible win against Oregon State. Congratulations to the Broncos on a win well earned. Yeah, that was ab I, that was absolute crazy series. I mean, Boise State ended up kind of clearing out the end there, but that bind match was absolutely crazy. It was 9-9 going up to that. Just mm -hmm. absolutely insane. That entire match there. Well, overall, that is quite a lot that we have to parse over. Before we end the broadcast tonight, Red Hawks, do you have anyone that you want to nominate for player of the game? I would think that especially for if, if we're going off of gameplay, and also Twitch chat, I think Diamao might be the one that people have been cheering on the less. Let's see what the three options are, though. Production is going to tease us with three players that could possibly play the game, and we got to choose from them. So the nominees for happen, tonight so are going PSG to be. It's like the first one. Oh, let me out. Had a, had a great oh, first, first game. Uh, that second it's half of the first game also again, really picked it up. Uh, you know, yeah, Daimyo was kind of leading that in the first half the entire way, but Alden really picked it up at the very end there. Did a great job. Uh, I definitely think. Uh, my other two, I mean, I think. I'm going to try to guess for these options, too. I, I think uh, Dragonfly definitely could be in it with Skies. Skies. Oh, sorry, it's going to be SU. Yeah, yeah. They won. Uh, Skies. You know, kind of had a great performance on the chamber. Always had this clutch right here was probably one of the craziest. I, this is definitely if there's a play of the game of the night, that that is number one. That was yeah, absolutely that crazy. Yeah, that, that might have just earned it right at the beginning of the night. And uh, uh, I think J -Bag. J -Bag, yeah. yeah. And I, I do want to really point out that J Bag's performance in game three, I think, is ex what BSU needed to win that game. I think he had, he top fried the last game. I think he had like 20 something kills on the last game, and he really stepped up as that brimstone controller and went crazy. I mean, he had the, he got a triple kill against Phantoms with a with a Spectre on round three. I mean, he just went crazy with that. Had a great heads up play with the Molly, and then the going through the Showstopper and the smoke to have the time to win by 0.11 seconds, and then that last play at the elbow. So, I mean, both all three of these players are really great. I think to guess, maybe I would say possibly J-Bag. I think he definitely played really well all three games, but that first game, Alden played so well. So I, I don't know what your opinions are on it, though, but I think hard I, choice. I'm actually going to go with Skies. I think that one play on... Oh, on, yeah. On, sometimes it is just one play that takes everyone aback so much that it just secures you the player of the game. So really, our opinions are split between all three, which is kind of, I think, what production was going for. So the player of the game for I'm tonight happen, is going so. to be Alden looks like he has been the one who has captured it. Yeah. Or unless they're playing I think it's, again. Are they dragging us out even longer here? And the rate of fire from it too, just being a one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with J bag on screen. So, oh, wow. But then the highlights oh, are skies. Looks for two. And then the highlights are skies. Exactly okay, yeah, this tells us absolutely nothing here. With because Boise State okay, okay. it is J bag, I which okay, I think is very well deserved. He played a very but, phenomenal but night. We're still seeing skies plays right now. So <laughs> I don't know exactly what message you're sending to us right now. I mean, I think there was just a lot of options that played so well. So I, I mean, J bag definitely had a great overall series. I think a lot of, they all did, but I think Game 3 really put them over the edge there for well, sure. Well, whoever it is, the player of the game is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, who believes a great player makes the team more successful, just like Idaho Central is helping members achieve financial success. Uh, is your player of the game for tonight. So overall, do you have any final thoughts, Red Hots, before we close out? Yeah, I really do want to say that Oregon State put up a great match today. I mean, how they used their utility was was honestly phenomenal. I, I really enjoyed watching them play because even though maybe the, the aim wasn't, you know, bar for bar for both teams there, you know, Boise State ended up winning it, but Oregon State's plays that they had with, like, the orbital strike into the showstopper and things like that. Dragonfly's uh, Cypher, which just did a game two, was just absolutely insane. I want to say uh, Rio and did a fantastic job game three. I think his sky was just phenomenal. He had so many kills, so I do want to give out shout to Oregon State, but of course, Boys State team. Loved seeing them in their first game. Showed a lot of, you know, just commitment and, you know, not getting too tilted and just great perseverance. So I do love to see that. Great games tonight.
Well, the gridiron rivals match goes in favor of the Broncos. We'll see how the football teams do tomorrow. But for now, we'll leave you with the top five plays of the game brought to you by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. Idaho Army National Guard is one of the best teams to join out there. Reach out to them on Twitch at iGuardGaming. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. And enjoy your top five plays. right away here no true to force just yet but Boise State is actually be just kind of lurking this B side playing very slow and then just going really explosive here it is there's the flash does find a point before the Viper wall even goes up and they're just gonna fire right through the Viper wall even though Morgan State got a few picks of the Dymo is trying desperately even things up with the help of Rolana and now Boise State in what looked like an a match that didn't start off well for them might still have a chance to get this, wow. but Larpson's been a consistent spoiler. Yeah. Oh, now it's 1v1 here. Oh! And just oh. use it just right. Daimyo does the great. Oregon said isn't even going to be able to do a full purchase either. They're having to settle for a few dogs, so that might be an opening little bit of crap to back. Wow. You tell it. Autumn just gets oh. right in the face of the Beavers and takes it out with the frenzy. What a rally from the Bronco. Could they get a flawless thrifty? I think they do. They do a great job of using their utility. They, they really are a utility team, and they do a great job of that. Hunter's Fury is now up again. Uh, Larbson definitely has it available. I have not seen that just yet. Oh, my gosh. Hunter's <gasps> Fury always it's two of them. Up from Larbson. Oh, Whoa. Two digs Whoa. Off to Boise State. Are you kidding me? Predicted exactly where they Low. Oh, a great shot from Waltz. Great shot from Sky as well. Swaps the head on her. Skies. Are you kidding me? No. Might be looking at a quad to just one miss on the operator isn't gonna have enough time to reload so he's gonna move on to the point itself reload and just gets oh. a little bit better. Happy McKenzie with the headshot on the head.